Hello everyone, I'm finally live on YouTube. So, uh, nice to see you all. I'm seeing the, all the messages on the chat and really thank you for joining today. Like, it's, it's a big day and uh, I'm, I'm really scared. Like, I, I don't know how you guys will, will, will see this training or you like it or not. I have prepared around like 120 slides and uh, sorry, the amount of people who are joining is really massive. We have around um, around 1,200 people registered for this training. So, guys, do you hear me very well? Please uh, write in the comment that you hear me, uh, if you guys hear me. Uh, so, I will uh, be um, covering today the most demanded blue team skill in the cybersecurity market in 2020. I'm reading it from the slide. Uh, so, today would be a great session. It's 120 slides, so I think uh, I think it will be around three hours before even the questions. And I have a really big announcement, and then really really big announcement. So make sure that you stay until the end. We will have the replay. However, perfect. Everybody is seeing. Um, everybody is seeing the uh, is hearing me, so that's very good. So perfect. So anyway. So I have a, a really big announcement at the end, so make sure that you stay until the end. Make sure that you have your snacks. Like I made it on YouTube so you can stream it on your TV, stream it with uh, you know, Google uh, Chromecast, watch it in whatever the comfortable way. Uh, today we'll be covering, uh, as I said, the most demanded cybersecurity skill, basically, or the most demanded blue uh, team skill. Uh, in 2020, in 2021 and beyond, it's really, really the most important and has been the most important for quite some time. I see people like, I'm getting tons of messages in the chat here on on, uh, on YouTube. Guys, if you see it in YouTube, in YouTube, I'm looking at the at the chat directly. But before, uh, before we actually start, uh, please share the link right now because now it's live. When you share the link, people will see it, your colleagues will see it, your friends, the people who I might not connect it with, but they do, uh, they may benefit from this training. So please share it right now. I'll give you like three minutes or two minutes to share it before we actually start. I'm waiting for people to all join. We have now around 250 people joining. So that's, that's impressive. I never had that a huge amount of number. And uh, yeah, so basically, Today, what we'll be covering, uh, I will talk in detail about what we'll be covering, but today is more like the, the general strategies. So if you are uh, still starting in cybersecurity, this is really, really useful for you. We'll be looking at the whole attack, how the malware attack looks like, how all the strategies that you that, uh, that the company has to follow to be able to protect uh, against this type of attack with all the job opportunities in all of these different fields and as well, we'll be looking at um, at how you can learn these skills. Um, so, um, so please include info about the future of malware analysis. This is uh, from Anmol um, Moria. I hope I pronounced the name correctly. So he's saying that please include info about the future of malware analysis and pay um, and and, and pay. Uh, compared to other and how it compared to the other security domains. That's a very good. So today we'll be talking about malware analysis and uh, and instant response or malware instant response compared to web bug hunting and bin testing. And seriously, I see like lots of trainings out there about car hacking and, uh, you know, um, hardware hacking and the different the, and physical hacking as well. And lots of red team uh, trainings that it's cool. I would really love to learn all of that, but I don't know how I can use that in, in the real world, like, or IoT hacking or all this stuff. It's interesting niche, but right now there is not much of jobs for it. If you're interested to learn, I'm interested to learn. So I, I actually bought uh, an IoT hacking book and it was a really good book. But at the same time, I know that this is not uh, something to work for. Like if I'm searching for a job, this is not what where I will find a job. Also, there's lots of information about bin testing that's not really correct. Um, anyway, so, um, will you post these live videos on your channel? 
it's live and it will the replay will stay for a few days then i will take it off so make sure that you watch it either right now or in the next um, one or two days so like i i would keep it maybe for three four days five days in that range so make sure that you watch it at that time and uh, i have a really cool offer at the end uh, so make sure that you stay until the end or don't scroll to the end just don't cheat so um so basically uh, i have because i have 120 slides and i want to go through them fast so i will not be checking the the chat while i am um I, i'm talk, uh, when i'm having the slides on when i'm looking at the slides so um make sure that you still drop your comments what do you think about it? Well, how do you feel? And as well, your questions, because at the end, I will go through all of this and there has been the whole night just reading all the chat and reading how you guys felt about the training. So please, if you feel it's good, write in the chat, how do you feel about it? If you uh, if you have any questions, just write it down. I will be answering these questions either in the live after the whole session or um, at, uh, at night, maybe I will send an email with it. So um, this is, yes, uh, this is, will be recorded and it will be um, recorded for three, four days, five days. Yeah, in that range. So make sure that you are, that make sure that you watch it fast. Um, I will get started. So I will be not looking at the chat, just to let you know. I will also get the whole thing uh, started. Um, what will be daily duration of the course and duration of course in form of days uh, i will talking about if you mean my own training um i will talk about it uh, later at the end of the day and um, for this training this is will be uh, three hours can you give a good uh, online class from india uh, like what? Okay, uh, I will keep the chat a bit later because there's so many messages and... Uh, okay, so I will get started. Let me see how it will go. So I will close the camera. So, well, I don't know if people like the light behind, but I will close it so you can focus on the screen. And I will start with the most demanded blue team skill in the cyber security market in 2020 by Amar Thabit, which is me. And let's get started. So what I want you to get out of today, the first thing is that malware analysis and incident response is, uh, are the most demanded skills in cybersecurity nowadays. I see that Every single day I, I talk to companies or talk to uh, team members in different companies and the most, uh, the biggest threat they are facing is malware attacks, wherever ransomware or, or, um, or malware that leads to data breach or supply chain, wherever the type of attack is, this is the most, uh, the, the biggest dangerous attacks they are facing and uh, malware analysis and incident response is the most demanded skill right now. The malware incident response is the most demanded skill right now in cybersecurity. I want you also to, today, I, one of the main takeaways is that I want you to understand the whole incident response process. The whole malware uh, type of attacks, how the, the attacks looks like, what is the tactic techniques and procedures, and what's common in the field, and then we'll go into the defense side or the, the response side, what is the whole malware incident response process? What's all the phases that the malware incident response go through? Go through and what? Um, and we will be diving in each phase of these phases. Make sure that you understand uh, the incident response process. And one of them would be the investigation. And in the investigation, we will be diving deeper into the malware analysis process. So in the malware analysis process, we will go through the whole process step by step. We'll have examples of each step of this process. So you'll understand it fully and you'll understand what is the questions that you need to answer in every single step. And that's all what we will be doing today. And as well, we will be covering threat hunting, which is one of the most trending topics right now. And uh, we will be covering what threat hunting is, uh, how to how how to perform threat hunting, and as well we will be covering how to learn threat hunting because 
it's a it's a trending um, it's a trending topic, but at the same time, there's no lots of resources. And last, we will be covering the next steps: how to build your uh, malware and response skills, how to learn that, what is the books, the resources to learn from, and as well, I will be uh, talking about our training and the, all the new announcements and the new uh, additions to the training. We have uh, really lots of things we added and we'll be covering that at the end. And then, so this is what we'll be covering today. This is the main topics and we'll be diving deeper into each one of these topics. This presentation is basically for SOC analysts or IT admins who are interested to uh, learn um, to 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 take uh, to go into the next step in their in their career so if you are a SOC level one or an it admin you maybe took ch or security blast or maybe you're just interested in the field and you learned from here and there and you want to to move to to go to the next step in your career in when you are a SOC analyst and when you are starting in cyber security you always get into this confusion point what to learn next do I, should I be a web bug hunter or a pen tester or a, or a network security guy or focus on malware analysis or digital forensics or incident response? What what's the the field that has more jobs that's that's possible to learn for yourself? And what should be your next step? And we will be this presentation will be a, a really great guide for you because we will look at the full picture, we'll look at how the whole attack looks like, how the organization looks like. Or every organization, how the whole um, cybersecurity team in every organization, how it looks like, what are the teams there, what are the different positions and different opportunities that you can get through. And we will be covering what is the things that companies are investing in the most at. Because there's lots of, uh, to be honest, there's lots of, of uh, wrong information out there and gets people confused. There's people who wants to market, oh, look at hacking the car course, and he's like, oh, this, this, and the, this is how to hack a car, and this is all these products and all these nice tools and nice goodies, but what, how you can use that in real life? What is the value that you're bringing to companies? If I learn that, will I be finding a job or not? So today we'll be covering what is the most demanded skill? What is the thing that can get you actually a good position with a good salary with really the recognition that you deserve as a SOC, as a as a cybersecurity expert because there are different jobs that there are really experts out there in cybersecurity who don't get any recognition who get very low paid jobs freelancing and you don't get any recognition and I don't want you to have that the the, the there is so many different fields in cybersecurity and I want you to shortcut your success and be in the in the job that is the most demanded so this is for you if you are a SOC analyst or an IT admin also if you are a cyber security on fiest this is for you if you are an instant handler that will get you to understand what is the most important part of the incident response it will help you a lot to understand the whole malware analysis uh, the whole incident response process the malware analysis process as well and how to respond to the to the the most dangerous attacks in um, uh, that you might face in your company or might your organization face. There are different attacks. There are some, some attacks that are not the most common, but could be the most deadly. And it's good to understand what exactly you need to learn to be able to better protect your organization and to be the one that is, uh, that is not, um, that's a replaceable person in the team, the, the, the one who is expert in this one thing and is able to better protect the organization from this type of attack, and this one is not replaceable. So it is, uh, it's, it will be really good for you to understand what is the most demanded skill. For people who are interested in threat hunting, we'll be covering threat hunting, what exactly it is, how it looks like, what you're exactly doing, and you will understand what... From there, you will understand what the skills you have to learn and where to invest to be um, to be a threat hunter. So if that sounds good. Let's see who this presentation is not for. So two types of people, <clears throat> and uh, it might sound a bit funny, but I get lots of questions a lot from lots of people who are interested in malware writing, interested to. Uh, techniques for my passing anti uh, antivirus for techniques to create a full FUD malware and um, 
there are good and bad tensions for that. It's not all bad tensions. Some of them are working in red team or they want to work in red team. They want to, uh, to create their own uh, malware to be able to, to do pen testing using malware. But the problem is that in this type of field, um, it's, it is quite gray area. The idea of being like it's in between legal and illegal. And I don't want to get so much into that. So for me, I don't cover malware writing and this presentation definitely is not covering malware writing or how to bypass antivirus or how to bypass um, different uh, firewalls or RDS. This is not will not be for you and this will not help you for that purpose. Um, the second type of people who are not interested to, to take their, their career to the next step because this presentation is, is a start, is not the end. This presentation is the first step in more steps and more uh, more things to do. We'll be covering the next step. We'll be covering all the resources that you can learn, uh, learn malware and answer response from. And uh, with this, uh, with this, with that, we, you need to make the commitment to start learning. So this is will be your introduction to the whole thing. You will understand the whole malware analysis process, the whole incident response process. You will understand the whole attack, how it looks like, what exactly the type of different jobs and uh, and uh, skills that's required for each position, and what is the resources. And then you dive deeper and you take the next steps. If you are not taking the next steps, this presentation could be a waste of time could have some in interesting information, but as well, it will not make a difference in your career. So with that said, let's get started. Before we, we, we start the presentation, I want you to, I want to make sure that you, um, you have your full attention because we will be diving a bit fast in the whole uh, presentation. And I want you to remove all the distractions, close all the tabs. If you have tabs, Facebook and WhatsApp, that gives you lots of notifications. Uh, as well, uh, if you have, uh, if you can put your phone on uh, Don't Disturb, just have your full focus on this presentation because we'll be going fast, has lots of important information and it's really, really, really good presentation. So make sure that you are ready for all the information, have a notepad with you and uh, take notes. And, um, because we will, uh, because you will need this information later on when you, you build your path uh, for your career. So let's get started. First, I want you to I want to introduce myself. My name is Amr Thabit, and uh, I have been working in Semantic for three years. I was working in the attack investigation team when we do analyze the top uh, attacks uh, from nation state attacks or or a um, type of uh, mega cyber crime uh, attacks like uh, WannaCry or or um, or other or banking trojans and make a huge impact. We do cover, uh, we worked in region, we worked on other nation state attacks from North Korea and, uh, and China, Russia and US. And now I work in Tenable, I work in Nissus Scanner um, I worked in my career uh, in threat intelligence, which was my attack investigation team, uh, my work in semantic, and also worked in incident response in before, and that's basically my uh, my career. And um, like when somebody hears all of that, it's like, oh my god, he is an expert. He worked in all of this. He spoke in different conferences. But what I want to say is that. Like I, I want to give you guys kind of an inspiration, or this is not this is not how I started. Like I, I want to get a little bit like for five minutes or or five minutes or less about how I started myself, and um, because there's so many people who who understand wrong about how how these people become experts, how these people become successful. It's like they have superpower already and they have born to become successful or they have just spent years and years studying in Harvard and they worked in this for five years and they got an amazing job. But the truth is not. For me, it didn't start like a, a very promising career from the, from the beginning. I was at the beginning, I was really interested in ethical hacking and nutrition testing. I was reading different books and I was searching for all of these interesting topics. There were some Arabic books. So also I was reading some English books and I was trying to learn English through these books as well. And I was so passionate about it. 
But then I faced the first obstacle in my uh, in my career, which is basically I couldn't get into computer science uh, field, and I become a mechanical engineering student. I, I entered the mechanical engineering department, and um, like it, it's so common that people believe that career is that, like degree is the most important thing, and that's what I have learned from my parents, from people around me that if you don't have the degree, you will never work in that field, and that was. The first obstacle that I faced, and I had to find a way around. And um, like to be honest, I tried almost every single thing. Like I tried to get into the certificates. Okay, uh, there's people who say that if you take a certificate, you'll be able to work in that field. I went uh, into um, Red Hat Linux uh, training, and uh, I should be able to apply for the certificate later on. But what I understood there. So what I understood there is that there are really um, like the, the certificate world works like that. You learn, you don't take one certificate, you take two, three, four, five, and hopefully you take like the optimum number of certificates, not too much to be overqualified, not too little to be underqualified. And you take the huge amount of certificates, still a big amount, but not massive. And then you take that amount of certificates, you apply for different jobs, and there is like other 100 people exactly like you, and hopefully you will find a job at some point. You take Red Hat, uh, Microsoft, then CCNA, CCNB, uh, Network Plus, Security Plus, CH, OSCP, and um, uh, and Sans, uh, Jeremy, if you want to go into malware. And all of these certificates, you have to get all of them before you even uh, apply for a job and there's so many people like you who took the exact same certificates and are applying for the same job and I find like this is not a good return over investment like I invest so much on these certificates on the exams and so on and just the exams like without even the the training itself just the exam the empty paper that I have to fill it is hundreds of dollars for no reason and then it expires and then you have to renew it again and you then maybe work as an intern for free for some time um, and then after, hopefully, you will be able to get a job. And I was like, that's that's impossible. And it, I don't have the money to invest in all these different certificates and all these exams and repeating the exams. Uh, and over and as well, there is no guarantee that I will get a job. Then I said, no, that's that's not working. I finished it. I didn't even take the certificate. I did only take the completion one. And then I went into trying... Uh, um, writing blogs or maybe I can get a job by you know I have a website and writing lots of articles and blogs and so on then I get an exposure then hopefully I will be able to uh, to get to some people and that didn't work out because I hated writing and uh, as well it was uh, difficult to get that traffic I tried CTFs I tried to get into different competitions and uh, and small CTFs but the problem with CTFs is that it's very different from from the real uh, from the real world uh, 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 challenges and you learn the real world thing and then you go to sort of, and you go to CTFs you you totally like sorry for the word but you totally suck and then if you learn to how to buy to pass uh, CTFs you don't learn the real world skills and I feel this is this is not how it, how it should work and you there's no guarantee that you you will get the first one in a CTF that you will be taking seriously for an interview or any uh, job application. So I said, okay, let's ignore all of that. And I decided, okay, let's look at what is the biggest uh, problem that companies are facing? What is the biggest threat? What is the things that people are talking about the most? And then um, the, the first thing that struck me, and before that I was uh, I got into malware analysis a little bit and started to shift a little bit to malware analysis, and um, the first thing that I saw is basically there's lots of uh, backed malwares. And uh, that was like 2008, 2009, when there was like uh, the signatures doesn't work anymore, the antivirus signatures, because there's lots of viruses that are encrypted or packed. And um, you need to unback them first before you, you scan with the signature. And uh, that was a good way for lots of viruses to bypass the antivirus. And that was the topic that most people are talking about. Then I wrote a tool called the Buka Simulator, and this tool helps to um, to unpack this malware before you run uh, the scan. So it's really a helpful tool for antivirus products. 
to be able to scan back the model. Um, then, after I wrote that uh, tool and posted in LinkedIn, a um, few days after, I got a message from Osama Kamal, and uh, I was invited to speak in a in a in Cairo Security Camp, which is an, a conference in Egypt. To spoke about my tool, and I was like, I was still a student, like a st student in mechanical engineering. And it was my first time not only attending a, a cybersecurity conference, but actually speaking in a conference. There was something that was like a big, a big thing. Not only that I spoke in the conference there, I went there, I spoke on, on the conference and it was like a, a, a lunch after my presentation. And I was still in the stage. And after the, the presentation, one of, one of the people, uh, one of the guys came out of the audience. He came to the stage and he gave me his card and he told me, uh, what do you think to work with us? You you look like a really skilled. What do you think to work with us in our team? And that was the first big shift in my life. Like from one to, from from totally um, like no hope that he will get into a cybersecurity field. I was feeling in every step to suddenly not only I'm speaking in a conference and I have that exposure, but also I'm getting an offer to work in a to work in a company. Like I get the offer, get somebody to ask me to work with his team. Uh, that was the biggest aha moment. Despite that, it didn't work out with this company, but that was the biggest thing. I was like, oh my god! Like I finally found the thing. Like if I just focus on what companies are afraid of the most, I can I can find easily uh, a job and I can get the exposure every single time and be the expert and then I get all of these people to me. And at that time was the packed malware. The second time was also about malware. It was actually, um, as you may know, this malware, which is Stuxnet. Stuxnet malware was a very famous malware that is created by, which is the rumors say, which is mostly true, which is uh, NSA and uh, Israel to the Mossad in Israel, the uh, and, um, the intelligence agencies to attack the nuclear reactor in Iran. And uh, with the Stuxnet, I I started to to dig uh, to dive into this malware. I got the sample. I analyzed like a very small part of it, and. Uh, I finished the analysis of this part on 27th of, of January 2011. And if you may know already, what is the meaning of that time? If you are in Egypt, you really know what this date means. Because on 28th, uh, we had a huge revolution in Egypt uh, and the whole internet was shut down. And it was shut down for like 10 days. But after 10 days, the internet came back. And... In one day, uh, when the internet came back, I checked my email and it was like, boom, there was tons of emails. There was people visiting, like 1,000 people at least visiting my blog every single day. And I got an invitation to speak in a, in a cybersecurity conference in Greece, in Europe. I got an invitation to, to, uh, to provide a presentation in the University of Sydney. The professor, uh, Lydia Khalil, invited me to uh, have a Skype uh, presentation to her students in the university. And I was still, at that time, I was still a student in the uh, in mechanical engineering and then um, providing a presentation um, with, the, uh, with the professor to the University of Sydney students in cybersecurity. I was also, uh, I got a request to, for an interview uh, of, uh, uh, for an interview of, uh, for a book that's about successful youth in the Middle East. And last, I also got a request uh, to be interviewed by Christian Science Monitor, and uh, which is a, a known newspaper in, I think, in UK or US. But anyway, um, so I got all of that in just like, in just basically just 10 days. I don't know, I didn't check these emails, which one came first, which one did what, like which one was sent in which day. But the whole thing is that I suddenly got the, the huge exposure and suddenly I became the expert from completely an unknown person to an expert. And I didn't analyze the full malware. I, I really analyzed this, the easiest part of it. I analyzed the full malware later on and I posted that uh, later. But at that time, I got the massive exposure. And most importantly, 
in the in the like in six months one year max i got around five different job offers really five different job offers i got one like this one was from brevex in uk i got a um an invitation from them to uh a good invitation from the manager himself asking me to work in uh, in their team um and he's the head of the prefix advanced malware research team um i got also an invitation from uh, a, a good invitation from another company in italy from a company in egypt from a company in qatar and from as well um a company in us and i have i have actually signed like with two or three companies at the same time. So I worked in the Egyptian company, I worked part-time with the US company, which was Komodo at that time. And then I I left both and then I moved to Qatar to work in uh, QCERT. Uh, and I worked there for one year and a half. And later on, I I worked in Semantic, which was in, a, in the attack investigation team, as I mentioned. And this team was actually just created after the Stuxnet attack. And from that, I was able to uh, I, I spoke in multiple conferences from now from that after and I followed the same thing what is the biggest uh, challenge that people are facing and I work on that and I was able to speak in DEFCON was able to speak in, in virus bulletin um, and uh, later on I published uh, the book mastering malware analysis and all of that came from following the biggest threat that companies are facing which is malware attacks the bagged malware and then Stuxnet. And the, the morals of this story is first is that it's not about certificates. It's not about degree or certificates. It's not about how much years, how many years of experience you have. It's not what you stack in your resume. It's about what is the biggest threat that companies are facing, how I can show them my skills, how I can put myself in front of them. It's basically these managers are doing Google search every single day, searching about these biggest attacks, how I can put myself in front of them and show them that I'm an expert. That's what I did with uh, with both uh, with both uh, tools, with the, both researches, the book simulator and Stuxnet. And the thing here is that both of them were about malware. Were the, either the backed malware or uh, the Stuxnet, which is the, the biggest thing. And from that, I was able to show myself as an expert. And the, 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 the strange thing is that that was 2011. Now we are in 2020. And the strange thing here is that malware attacks is still the biggest threat that companies are facing and panicking from every single day. And I see that because I work closely with them. And not only that, I say that even big researchers like this is FireEye Cyber Trendscape Report 2020, they are saying that malware attacks are the top reason for data breaches nowadays. What is data breaches? Data breaches basically are attackers who get into the organization and steal information. This information could be, um, um, could be, sorry, uh, uh, this information could be um, blueprints could be customer data, could be employees data, could be uh, credit cards, could be so many things. And um, it's not just the, the problem of stealing this information or resetting some passwords. This information, if according to GDPR, the new law that has been released in Europe, and also some states have, uh, have similar uh, laws, is that if there is any data breach, if there is any... Um, uh, if there is any loss of uh, of data or, or any leak of customer data, customer sensitive data for any company, the company has to pay 20 million euros of fines for just this customer data has been leaked. Whatever this has been leaked according to uh, because of an attack or because the company have sold this information, whatever the case is, the company has to pay at least 20 million euros in fines or to pay 4% of their annual worldwide revenue, whatever it's higher. So if the company is earning, I don't know, 1 billion, then you will have to pay um, 400, um, they will have to pay, they have to pay 20 million anyway. They will have to pay 40 million annual revenue. So they have to pay 4%, whatever, I'm not good in math, you can calculate it, but they have to pay 4%. And if they didn't, 
if they didn't um uh, if they didn't report this data breach they will also pay another two million or two percent of their annual revenue so it's, it's really a massive number imagine each one attack is 20 million euros of losses for a small medium business that could be a disaster like that could be just at the end of their business that is being used by ransomware ransomware encrypt free ransomware who in, who doesn't encrypt files it basically steal uh, customer uh, sensitive data and ask companies to pay uh, a ransom or they will leak this information and they will have to pay the 20 millions and if you say that oh not i'm not working in europe every company has a branch in europe in somehow in email and if they have a branch they are following the gdpr rules for small medium business i told you they are really having a really bad situation not only from data breaches also from ransomware attacks according to help net security 22 percent of small medium businesses uh, smbs and small medium businesses that experienced a ransomware attack they cease of business operation immediately they, they stop their business operation immediately it's just close 50 percent of of them who lose data become unprofitable within 30 days like that's that's massive like like for a, for a small medium business to in 30 days to become completely unprofitable that's a massive disaster and the tax are way even more scary than that you see like every single year and this is like we had stocks in 2011 and that was like the biggest thing but now every single year we have multiple uh, malware uh, families that are hitting the media by storm everybody's talking about them boeing tesla has been breached by a ransomware attack two years after one cry a million computers remain at risk um and when the screen went black how did video target mercy mercy is an oil company and um, and uh, and all the story about this attack these attacks are really scary the most and malware now has moved like we remember in my childhood when we, every usb had a malware and you were infecting your machine and they basically do nothing apart from annoying you and slowing down the computer but that was the past now malware attacks are really a planned attack is really really a target attack which you mostly call ABT attack or advanced persistent threats which comes into the organization they take ages until they've been discovered they say it takes around eight or nine months to discover a data breach discover uh, to discover an attack that's inside the organization and they, uh, and they do like ransomware attacks or banking trojans so uh, or bank trojans or um or um, or any data breach uh, attack they all um they, they all focus on organizations they all go for the organization because this is all the money and by that means if this is all the money is there then these companies invest the most to protect themselves against these attacks i see that every single day people are talking about file malware or ransomware like for file malware you see every day there are it, it hits the the news every all the news talking about them and the funny thing here is that you, you the people learn about like webback hunting and you see all people discover on bits in facebook and stuff like that but the truth is this is not the, what the companies are caring about because they know that if they have any web web vulnerability on their website there will be 1000 um white hat hacker who try who finds this vulnerability before any black ha hacker finds it in black hat hacker so basically they are there's no risk of this there's nothing that hits the media about a new sql injection or a new uh, i don't know uh, file uh, file closure vulnerability or closure i don't know how it's named like there's nothing that hits the media about them there's nobody talks about them there's, no, there's nobody who is panicking from them when you learn nutrition testing and this is what I really see. Like, like people who learn British and testing, they don't. They, the the courses don't mention this type of attacks. They, they mention like port scanning and stuff like that. But this is not the real attacks. Like, this is this is what, what I'm talking to you today is the real attacks. Like, this is what we see every single day. This is what we see that makes the massive impact negative impact. It makes the massive amount of losses. That's what companies are panicking. You can't imagine how many people 
ask me every single day from people who are working in big companies, uh, um, big or small companies will talk about, who ask me about ransomware attacks, what to do with ransomware, what to do with ransomware, what to do with Imitet, what to do with uh, NotPetya, what to do with WannaCry. Like these questions have been asked every single day. The managers, the CISOs, they panic about these attacks. They search all the internet on how to defend themselves. And uh, now with these attacks, it's it's so easy for for an attacker to uh, to create this malware. There's no need for uh, for him to even learn coding. There's ransomware, uh, there's ransomware as a service. If you hear about it, they just they just have to have the traffic, and they can take a ransomware. They they use it to they they find a way to bypass the the EV. The antivirus will not talk about it today, but they they find a way. They send it to uh, to an organization, they hack the organization and they ask them for lots of money. We see that, we see Emotet has been used until today, even with the coronavirus, uh, the, 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 the attackers don't have a compassion, right? They, they don't think about, oh, we'll stop the attack because of coronavirus. They don't do that. They continue and they, they are more aggressive. The corona maps that have been spreading through the internet has malware uh, in them and they are spreading TrickyBot and Emotet malware, which is uh, banking Trojans and steal credit card information or do bank transfers uh, to Rouge accounts and as well uh, uh, Emotet used to uh, to deploy Ryok which is another ransomware so after he steal the credit card information they also encrypt files and ask for a ransom and we see these attacks every single time so how real attacks looks like so we talked about the the, the malware attacks and how this is the biggest the like this is what scares the people the most this is what scares companies the most and uh, who tells you that it's all about you know port scanning and uh, and finding a surface and then you find ftb with anonymous anonymous and stuff like that this is totally not true even exploits still exploits is widely used but malware attacks is the biggest danger and i have seen you i have showed you like this is the biggest threat this is where everything uh this is what makes companies panic. This is the biggest attack that you need to invest in. So how real attacks looks like? This is how real attacks looks like. It starts with, in many cases, and actually you see that this is the most common type of attacks, which is phishing email has maybe a document or a, or a, or a link that drops. This document has a macro. Once it runs, it drops a malware or it downloads another malware. So you have a malicious document, then you have a, a backdoor, and this backdoor starts to receive commands from the attacker. It may download other modules, other uh, other plugins, other additional tools, or download some tools to use for lateral movements. And from there, they start what you learn and been testing, which is like port scanning and finding other machines, and then send the malware to them, to multiple machines, they, uh, and, and then from there, they start collecting more information. If the company is like a retail or it has like, it has a shop, then they have a point of sale malware that being sent to the small machines that, that you tap your credit card on, which actually runs Windows XP. They, uh, they send this malware to them, they steal the credit card information and they collect all of this information and send it to the attacker. Uh, so for that, for that, they do all the data gathering, they collect all this data, they save it somewhere, he maybe zip it or something, and, the, and then he put them into small files and then he exfiltrate them uh, slowly, slowly, but to not raise attention and exfiltrate all of this data out. This is how real attacks looks like. This is what I, uh, what, this is the pattern that you will see every single day, and we'll look into that. So this is the simple image, of course. There is one that is a bit more complicated, which is the meter attack. And here I want you to focus so much because meter attack is something trendy right now. It is basically, it's an organization, a very known organization, very respectful, uh, very respectful organization that decided to take all the attacks that they have seen in the wild, not only malware, like all types of attacks that have been seen in the wild and actually map all of their tactics, techniques, and procedures in one big map. Shows all the uh, all the phases, like here, I don't know if you see my mouse, but here like the initial axis, the execution, the persistence, like all of these phases one by one, 
um, all the phases that the attack goes through until at the end the impact which has the maybe the encryption of the files or or denial of service or 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 it's just exfiltration of data and stuff like that so whatever like the whole phases from the initial access to the impact they map all of them and they map all the techniques and you see here like for example uh, the spear phishing attachment, spear phishing link, a drive by compromise, which is basically a link as well, sometimes sent through email or uh, or a watering hole, like a, a legitimate website has been already compromised, and uh, there was uh, a malicious link that drops uh, a malware. And then after that, the execution could be through a script or through directly executing a malware or uh, through PowerShell commands. And later on is the resistance, how they maintain resistance, how they uh, maybe how the backdoor maintains resistance. Like all of this stuff is mostly about uh, the the backdoor itself and the privilege escalation as well. And then how they bypass the defenses and how they go into the literal movements, which is uh, they access all the credentials of different machines. Then after they access all the credentials. Uh, through password dumping or through uh, brute forcing passwords or whatever the way is if you get into some accounts they start to do a port scanning they start to understand the whole network around them what are the other machines around what is the network how the the whole organization is mapped and then with the lateral movements he start to move to other machines they start to move closer and closer to the machine, uh, to the servers who he wants to get into, which has all the sensitive information. And as you know, in big organizations, uh, there are networks that are not accessible through other networks. So to, if you want to go to like a, uh, like a, a restricted zone of some servers that has lots of information, then you need to go into a specific machine. And from this machine, you can have a proxy to get into this uh, the servers, so he, the attacker starts to move slowly, slowly inside the organization until he reaches these sensitive uh, servers. Then he collects in the collection time, uh, he collects all of this data from local system or from shared drive. He takes all of this data, he sides them. Then he starts uh, with all of the proxies he's making to uh, exfiltrate this information. So he communicate with the command control server, whatever it is. Um, uh, uh, like uh, through HTB or whatever the way is or even through Dropbox or Reddit or whatever the way is and he copy all this data and exfiltrate it out to um, to the attacker and later on maybe he will encrypt all the files and, uh, and encrypt all the machines and ask for a ransom to increase his, uh, his earning to make more money out of the attack or maybe he will just wipe the servers or he will just leave will without leaving traces whatever the choice you make at the part of impact so this is basically most of the attacks and you can dig deeper into each one of them there is actually another uh, screenshot uh, unfortunately i didn't add it here that has which one is the most common so as we I have been speaking a lot so i have some i need some water so anyway so this is basically the map of the attacks. If you are learning, if, if you want to learn anything in cybersecurity, this is your, this is basically your guide. This is all the attacks that's possible, all the techniques and tactics and procedures. And uh, if you don't know any one of them, go to Meter uh, website. They have like a Wikipedia when they explain each one of these attacks, what they are exactly, what it is, uh, how it's being done, how it's being detected, so you can understand how um, how this looks like and um, the thing here is that with like the most common thing that I uh, there's lots of thoughts in my mind but uh, one of the thoughts that I want to talk about is basically the initial access and the most common ways of the initial access there is um, the most common that I I have seen a lot and really really a lot in so many um, big gangs or nation state attacks or really attacks that made a huge impact like on Sony uh, on on different companies on big organizations was mostly using spear phishing and the thing here is that there is a usual combination or the most common combination that I see in the attacks it is basically social engineering 
and malware. This combination together is the scariest combination you could ever see. People who invest a lot in exploits and I like exploitation. I work in vulnerability researching now, or I work uh, with with tenable works on who cover that topic. But I can tell you that social engineering and malware together is the biggest, is the deadliest uh, attack. Uh, because we see a lot of spear phishing emails with macros or with links that actually bypass the spam filter. They get to the to they get to the um, they get to the to the to the employees and they get into their machines and they start from there. Um, and this is like a simple, very simple. Like this is, I think, a LinkedIn message. So it doesn't have to be through email. Maybe through LinkedIn. Maybe through Twitter. Maybe through a Facebook post. Um, and this is a, an example of it. Like this is a, a screenshot of of a message. Like, oh, I really, I'm very busy right now. I can check below to find the details. And then you download this Excel sheet. This is an Excel sheet. An Excel sheet has a macro. It enables a macro. And macros are used a lot, by, especially by economists and people who work in economy, which is lots of companies, especially financial companies, are using. And um, and they execute that. They they execute the macro, and disasters happen. And Despite there's so many different ways to protect against, it's still not fully protected, and there will be more and more ways to to bypass these protections. This is like uh, uh, they are showing as they are a Cambridge University uh, a member of Cambridge University, and they push them to open a malicious document, and this attack was actually in in June 2019 was the EBT 34 by an Iranian uh, threat actor um, and has been identified by FireEye. It was a um, really massive attack. You can uh, discover it more. And um, this is one type of attack, which is a spear phishing attack. And uh, I see most of the big attacks are coming from this. Not only spear phishing attacks are the, the most deadly attacks, something like uh, supply chain. There was, um, that was also 2019, there was um, actually the attack started in 2018, but has been discovered in 2019, that ASUS, uh, if you know ASUS, it's a very known um, uh, laptop manufacturers, I used to use one of their laptops before, and basically they discovered after long, long time, maybe after one year, that they have been breached, and their uh, live update tool that is in on their laptops by default this tool is actually uh, the code has been um, or it has been infected by a malware and this malware has been has been spreading to all of their customers all of the laptops they have been manufacturing the, the organization was actually uh, compromised and their tools has been used to spread the malware and you can imagine with just with this um, infected software they have been able to infect around 1 million users uh, by this malware through the software updates. They have been able to infect 1 million different customers. From this 1 million, there was actually different companies who are producing uh, other uh, tools. There was three companies who were producing games, and these three companies, their games have been infected by this malware as well, and uh, the malware has injected its code inside the code of the game, and this game went into so many people who have been infected by this malware as well. The malware infected like over a million for sure, and all the other attacks has not been um, calculated. This is one type of attack through a supply chain, which is one of the ways they get into different victims, whether individuals or uh, organizations. For this case, it was individuals. For another case, it was also kind of individuals, but really high profile hotel guests. A malware that used to, uh, able, the attackers were able to compromise a hotel, and from that hotel, very high, very important hotel, they were able to, to through the Wi-Fi of the hotel, they were able to attack uh, high profile targets and infect them with another malware. And the dark hotel, uh, and I didn't put the, here the, the map for it, but it used to be like, a, uh, kind of spear phishing or something like that. And then they get into uh, or some different things.
was like this and then they get into executing partial and then a malware and was like a big map for the attack uh you can look at it i actually i i i heard about it first time from uh devastating attacks it was a presentation by black hat uh, a webinar by black hat who talks about the most devastating attacks that has been seen in 2019 and one of them was dark hotel was really a devastating attack as well and the strange things that the strange things that they talked about multiple attacks but all of the attacks were actually malware attacks um in this uh, web uh, this webinar by black hat you can check it out it's called the most devastating attacks uh i think in 2019 or something like that uh, so this is how the attack world looks like this is what you would see in real life and then um, you can check a website or actually a github repository is called ebt notes i will put the links at the end of this presentation if you stay at the end i will have all the resources if you stay at the end of this presentation uh, in this ebt notes there is links to all the attacks that have been published or the attacks have been uh, have been uh, analyzed investigated and uh, companies published about them and you can see that all of these advanced persistent threats all of these attacks all of them uh, were based on malware at some point customized malware have been sent to this uh, organization every every gang every uh, medium size to uh, a big organization um, of criminals they create their own tools they create their own malware and they create their own family uh, of uh, of uh, on variants of different samples and they use their own tools combined with uh, some exploits or uh, spear phishing and social engineering they craft their attacks the thing here is that this is the real world and why i why i want to why i'm repeating that is because lots of people who invest so much in things that are not as important and then they don't get the recognition they deserve like it really it really feels sad for the like this type of these people who like become web bug hunters they are like oh my god i will find lots of bugs and then i will be able to get so much money and then they they um, they they spend so much time like they spend hours and hours and hopefully to find the vulnerability and then they get like fifty dollars and then one hundred dollars and maximum like one thousand dollars this when they like they find a like rce or something right like remote code execution um and they're like uh, and they spend so much time and sometimes they get they discover an rc but then they, they said oh it's a duplicate there's somebody else who has sent that and they are really like the amount of money that they get from that is not equal to the amount of effort and they get paid if they found a vulnerability if they didn't find it there's no guarantee that they were able to feed themselves if they work full time in that some companies some countries that could be quite helpful but in most of the cases it's not it's not like what you can sustain your life from and it's not the the real job that you can actually um uh, you don't get like a real salary, real permanent job or the recognition that you deserve as an expert. Like this is really difficult. I know that web, web attacks are not easy, really difficult. But it is not the biggest threats the companies are facing. Uh, red team is interesting. Bin testing is really interesting. But if the real attacks is not what you see in the bin testing courses, it is this type of attacks. It's the spear phishing, the malware, the all the stage that goes through. All what we have seen here and the meta attack look at this advanced persistent threats look at this ebt notes look at the article see how these attacks looks like dig deeper into them i just give few examples I just give two three examples but if you look at real attacks on the internet on ebt notes there's all the attacks every single year around like 10 or 20 articles every single year about different massive attacks you will see what is the most uh, scarce thing for organizations if you are a person who wants to shortcut your success the same way as I did and also my students did uh, just find what is the biggest threat that their companies are facing and do something in that notion uh, just two days ago I, I may even but I didn't put the, the actually his message on the um, 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 on the uh, on the on the slides but there are multiple multiple uh, students from mine 
who actually did the analysis for Emotet or Password Locker, they write a decryptor for it, and they got, um, they got contacted by, by uh, security analysts or uh, managers in different companies the same way as, I, as happened to me, asking, asking them to send a resume to, uh, to apply for, for jobs inside the organization. Uh, Mahmoud Morsi, which we, which helped me with the, with the training later on, he was actually one of our students. And Mahmoud Morsi, he did an analysis for Emotet, for WannaCry, for NordBitia, and he got contacted by organizations like F-Secure, like security analysts in these companies and managers from F-Secure, from, uh, from Avera, from, um, from ESET, from uh, also another organiz another company in Spain and another company in US, he worked with the one in US, and he got contacted with multiple companies asking him for um, uh, asking him to send his resume to them, not because he already was like mastering every single one, or he has five years of experience, or he has in his resume uh, like. Uh, all this amount of certificates. That wasn't the case. What he had, he worked on what's the biggest threats that the companies are facing, uh, which is malware attacks, the biggest malware attacks like Emotet or WannaCry or something like that. He analyzed them, he wrote a nice report, and with that, he got all of them seeing him as an expert. And that's what I wanted you to understand, that find what is the biggest threat that companies are facing, which is now the malware attacks, and Build your skill around that, and now we will see what it what it takes to to be able to be that person. What is the skills to be able to defend against these attacks? Uh, we'll talk now about the malware incident response. So, what is the malware incident response? First, before we talk about the the malware incident response, let's talk about the the organizations how it looks like and uh, their teams to respond to such attacks. We have explained how the attacks looks like. Now let's look about how the defense line looks like. In in the small staff organization, they have um, what's called SOC team. They have three tiers or three levels of their SOC team. The first one, which is uh, the, the tier one, which maybe most, maybe lots of you guys are actually working in that uh, level or applying for that job. These guys, they get alert from like help desk, from IT departments, from some tools, and they do also monitoring for all the alerts that comes from uh, like uh, from IDS, from IPS, from different tools. They do the basic uh, investigation, the basic triage, and uh, if there is something they found in the they collect some data and they send it to the tier two. The tier two, they have, uh, they have more understanding of the of the infrastructure of the organization. They understand, they understand what is happening. They correlate all of this information together, and they see if that means there is an attack. They do um, more in depth investigation. They mitigate more attacks, and the, the more high profile attacks goes to the tier three or the level three. And this tier three, they do all the incident response process. They do the advanced investigation. They do forensics. They do threat hunting. They do malware analysis. They do every single thing. This is the tier three. Uh, this, some organizations call it tier three. Some call it the incident response team. Some other they have inside the incident response team or under that umbrella more teams. Some say like digital forensics, malware analysis team. Vulnerability management team, which deals with uh, vulnerabilities and uh, and uh, batching and so on, and what are the the vulnerable systems and um, what are the exposed assets and stuff like that, which use our uh, which use Nasus scanner, which that company that I'm working in, and the last is fraud management, which which deals with fraud and other teams as well. All of these organizations, all of these teams are under the CISO which deals with the, with the information security, he's the, the information security officer. So the incident response process looks, uh, first, before we go into that, so the incident response process, the goal for incident response process is to answer 
some specific questions for all of these things. These questions are important to understand the attack, to mitigate the attack, to make sure it doesn't happen again, to detect again this attacker if he comes back again or if he has any footstep inside the organization if he's still there uh, until now and helps to detect all his footsteps, all the, the compromised accounts, machines, and make sure that he doesn't come back to the organization. So every uh, every question, and this is basically a screenshot that I took from, uh, or a table that I took out of my um, uh, Maranas report uh, template. I have a complete template that I, I showed it to uh, my students in, uh, in my last training and they were really impressed by it and this is just one part of it which talks about the questions that you need to answer in your report so this is the questions that the whole Maranas process or the whole incident response process tries to to answer the first thing for the CISO or the all the high levels they need to understand the impact of this attack and what assets have been compromised or were exposed to this attack and what are the weaknesses in the existing security protocols in the organization that needs to um, that needs to be uh, needs to invest more into securing them and um, what is the remediation plan to stop these uh, attacks or similar attacks in the future so the CS, the CISO needs to prioritize what is the um, uh, where's the budget the security budget will go to we'll, we will protect we will invest in some protection against uh, let's say a PowerShell attacks or uh, or um, or awareness programs or spear phishing or spam filter or or sandboxing like what exactly the thing that we'll invest on and the CI, the CISO needs these questions to be answered to be able to prioritize the budget and build the next level of uh, security uh, uh, security infrastructure. The SOC teams uh, for the, let's say, if we are dealing with incident response team, the feedback to this uh, to this security tier one and security tier two, and what they give back is the indication of compromise. What is the IOCs for this attack that we need to, uh, that you can use uh, to, um, <clears throat> that you can use to detect other machines that, ha that is infected or possibly the next attack. Also, just to forget to mention that also in incident response, there are team like a threat intelligence team who gets information about these attacks from other companies. So if, if your organization has been affected by an attack, the, after they cover the whole attack, they give all of the information about this attack to other similar organizations so they can prepare uh, for this attack before it happens to them. So they give them this information about how they were attacked, what are the samples, what are the indication of compromise, and then they, uh, they, being, they are used in their SOC team to be able to detect this attack before it makes a big uh, issue. And uh, mostly the CISOs who share, who have like private communication where they do share this indication of compromise. For the incident response team, they need to know what actually had happened. What are the infected assets so they can contain them, they can clean them, they can make sure that the, nothing happens. And uh, they want to know as well what are the tactics, techniques and procedures the attackers has used so they can uh, better uh, protect against these type of attacks in the future or invest more into uh, detecting uh, this type of uh, of tactics or techniques um, and so on and also they need to to build the remediation plan so there are infected machines how we can get them uh, clean how we can make sure that there's no more footstep for the attacker the vulnerability management team they want to know what are the vulnerabilities that have been used uh, for the attacker either in gaining the initial access which is like uh, through a link which has an exploit that exploits the browsers or exploit the office programs or exploit Adobe or whatever the, the tool they exploit or even in escalation privilege that has been used by the uh, escalation, uh, escalation privilege exploits have been used to gain the root on some servers or on the endpoint and um, 
They also want to know if there is any zero day that has been involved. There is a new exploit that haven't been used before, a new vulnerability that the vendor doesn't know about, so they can inform the vendor and they can find a workaround. So this is basically the questions that, you, that they need to answer. Why do you care right now? If you are starting in cybersecurity, why do you care about the questions? The, the reason that you care about these questions is because once you know how to answer these questions about an attack that you see, you are your value is 10x, like you, your value become way, way more. Like, think about it this way. If you are in an interview, or if you are in, in working in a company, if you are um, if you are analyzing an attack, if you are learning some skills to know how to analyze an attack, think have these questions in your mind because this is the questions. This is basically the goal of your of your job. This is the the main product that you will give to these teams. This is what will you, what you will produce after all. People really think about. What, what exactly the skills they do, but they don't think about what's the important output. Once you know that this is your output, then you can focus on that and not to learn things that are not important, right? If you are able to answer these questions to the CISO when you have an interview with him, he, uh, he, will, he will be actually asking about different things related to that. When we cover the, the incident response process, we will be Covering these questions, we will have them as our plan. Watch each step helps us in this process. So, here is the malware incident uh, response process. And uh, with each step has different uh, required skill sets to learn. So, for the detection, you mostly, if you are working in SOC, you already know how to do this part. You already have learned this part, you already took even uh, with your company some courses on uh, on different uh, uh, products like uh, I, don't, I don't know Juniper, Cisco uh, or even Splunk or things like that if you are not then uh, some tools may be useful for you like Splunk or uh, Kibana or uh, uh, Elasticsearch we'll talk about them later on but basically the detection is having all the logs that comes from all different products, all different uh, um, all different security products or normal um, or normal operational logs and you take all of these logs and you try to analyze them to understand if there's any anything suspicious. So you have the firewall logs, you have the IDS, the intrusion detection system, the intrusion prevention system, which they tell you about if there's any activity that looks malicious. Then you have the EDR, which talks about endpoint detection response, which uh, which uh, detects any suspicious activities on the endpoint machines. You have other tools as well, like you have the the email uh, logs, you have the web access logs, which are related to all the communication that's happening to the web uh, to the websites or the web servers that you have. You have so many different other logs, and you need to correlate all of these logs together to find something suspicious. And um, uh, in this part, it is between threat hunting and between uh, SOC analysis. This part is really important and is the first start of, of getting some information and actually detecting something suspicious. Once you detect something, then you detect, let's say, these machines are being compromised or possibly compromised, they're behaving suspiciously, then you go and you start to collect all the evidence about these machines, which includes uh, memory acquisition, uh, getting the memory uh, dump, uh, getting the disk image, the uh, the hard disk image and also maybe backet capturing for a little bit about uh, to see what's happening on that server once you collect all the evidences you, you go into these two in parallel the investigation and the containment so you know that this machine possibly compromised so you try to isolate it you try to make sure that um and try to reset accounts if these accounts have been affected. You try to make sure that it doesn't spread from there. And as well, you do the investigation part, which you do the network forensics, the digital forensics, the memory forensics, and the malware analysis. The network forensics, it is something could be between detection and between investigation. It's, it happens in both, uh, in both phases. And as well, 
once you collect information, let's say you collected the samples, some information about some new IOCs, some samples you found, some domains, some um, IPs, some uh, registry keys, wherever you found, you go back to the detection, uh, to the ADR or to wherever the tools, and you try to know more machines, and you try to, to contain these machines, and so on. So there are some repetition goes into these uh, four machines. You for uh, steps, you do investigation. You know more IOCs. You go in to try to detect if there is any other uh, compromised servers or compromised machines that has the same IOCs. Then you uh, detect more. You collect some information about them. You do investigation. You do the containment, and you go into that loop. Once you finish all that loop and you make sure that you have contained all the full steps for the attacker. You do the remediation part. This is when you make sure that that the, this whole loop has finished and you actually the the, contain, the containment was successful, and as well you get to know what is the weaknesses and you try to enhance the organization security features to make sure that this attack doesn't come again. The reporting part, which is a very important part, which is the whole document at the end to answer these questions to the to the organization to all the teams and if you um uh, if you if you already uh, if you're listening to me well you will understand that the reporting phase is being done through the whole time so the reporting is not only done at the end it is actually being done through the time because you need to contain the machine you need to contain the attack once you discover it you need to contain uh, this machine is being infected or this account has been compromised you don't wait until the report at the end you need to um, you need to um, to inform different teams immediately when there is something is happening when there is an exploit and you go you send the vulnerability CVE or the vulnerability information to the vulnerability management team and to get some information about what's the exposed systems and how we can contain that so the reporting is not only answers the question, but the reporting is an ongoing process to contain and to help covering this whole attack. And at the end, it closes the whole uh, um, the whole incident response process with some lessons learned, uh, answered questions, and IOCs and information. So this can be shared as well with other uh, with other companies, other organizations as a threat intelligence information, and could be shared on the higher management. If that sounds good, let's dive deeper into each one of these phases. So this is the whole uh, idea. This is the exact process. And if you uh, if you are with me, we will uh, we will go into every one of these phases and we will cover the skills required for each phase of them, and what's your role exactly in all of that. So we have understand now the whole attack, how it looks like. We understand how the incident response looks like. What are the questions that you need to answer? And now we'll dive deeper. So for the detection phase, you basically you have, as we said, you have so many different logs and so many different uh, information. Some of them are actually threat intelligence information. So you have so much of different logs. You have uh, firewalls, you have IDS, IPS, vulnerability scanners, web proxy, NetFlow, which is uh, Bro or Zeek. Uh, you have different things you have the endpoint you have the malware detection from the antiviruses you have the operating system logs the event logs from windows all of these logs you get all of this information from thousands of machines in the organization it's really massive and whatever the the size of the SOC team they can't process all of the alerts and all of the information that comes through these logs so what happens is that you have some threat intelligence information that brutalize uh, this data and make sure that we look at the most important uh, alerts first and we deal with them. Uh, for you to learn this, uh, to learn that field, mostly you need to learn Splunk or uh, or Kibana, which are tools uh, useful for uh, for visualization and as well uh, data mining over all of these logs. So you can have all of these logs together, you can correlate information together, you can search on different things, and it's really good tools to search um, with really massive amount of data. Uh, Splunk is expensive, 
but lots of companies are using it and it's basically a sim uh, it's a security uh, environment i don't exactly remember how is it but it's uh, the security tool which is known um a management uh, tool which collects all of this information and also provide alerts and it can help to create some visualization as well uh, apart from Splunk, you have Kibana, which is open source, is not as good as um, as Splunk, but still a nice tool. It's based on Elasticsearch, so it uses Elasticsearch and uh, Logstash. Logstash takes all the logs, it process all the logs, and convert them into some variables and uh, and data. Like here, the type, the the HTTP that code, it converts them to different names with with values. As you see up here like uh, type HTB, status error, client IP is this, and so on. Then you have Elasticsearch, which does the searching over all of this data, and you have Kibana, which is the UI, and uh, they all the three together is called ELK, which basically process all of this data. And uh, it's an open source, compared to Splunk, it's free, all free. You can use them as much as you want. So that's also an, uh, an alternative that some organizations are using or some uh, people are using. If you are a threat hunter, you will mostly think about learning Kibana because if you want to do threat hunting by your own tools, then you need to have open source tools. You can be using Splunk with like uh, uh, terabytes or gigabytes of, uh, of logs. So there's basically these tools after the this is the detection phase uh, very basic i know that uh, you may already have lots of information about it you already learned some products some tools possibly you are if you are not that's also okay because you don't have to dig so deep into it and let's get to the to the important part which is the collection phase and in the incident response team as we said there's three teams or sometimes even way more teams that doing the incident response and the tier one and tier two are the ones who are mostly doing the detection phase. While the incident response team who is doing what's after that, which is the collection phase, investigation and the containment. So the collection phase is basically collecting all the, collecting the, like um, the memory dump. There's tool like dump it, which can dump the whole memory in an USB or uh, over the network. Um, you have as well, um, this is for memory acquisition. You have as well Memorize or Redline, which is used by, uh, which is created by FireEye, which also do the same, they collect the, they acquire the memory. Redline has even more, uh, uh, more usages, can collect more information, can process uh, also disk images and some other information too. You have for disk image, you have FTK Imager, which takes an image of the, which does the, the data, the disk image acquisition. It takes a copy of the whole disk and makes sure it's a perfect uh, copy. There's no uh, data loss. There's no uh, something tempered, which is important. If you want to use it for the court data, you need to make sure that you have took an exact image of the disk. You're able to um, use that later to uh, to detect if there's any uh, deleted files, anything malicious, and so on. So, so, so you you get the the memory image, you get the disk image, and later you get the packet. Uh, that you do the packet capturing, which you get to know if there's any activities happening on the internet. You get to dive deeper into these packets later on to know what exactly the attacker was doing, what is the what he's exactly sending, what commands he's sending, what uh, data he's exfiltrating, and so on. So this is the the collection part, the acquisition part. And also you may collect other logs and other information that will be included in the disk image as well. After that part, we go to the investigation phase. And the investigation phase, there are multiple things you can do. The first thing you may think about is the Windows Forensics, which is basically uh, analyzing the disk image. For the disk image, you, you, you may check for the master file table. And this helps to, like the main goal of Windows uh, Forensics is basically to create a timeline of all the changes that had happened to this disk uh, from the time when we discovered this machine 
when we discover that this machine is uh, behaving suspiciously and backward uh, f uh, until when this attack has actually started. So with, with looking at the hard disk at that time, we were able to find if, what exactly the whole attack, uh, what exactly had happened through the time, what the attacker has, did, has, uh, has been doing for the whole time. So you can find, let's say, the email that has a document, and then you find this document has been dropped in the temp and has been executed, or uh, the macros has been executed, then a new sample has been dropped. Then that the attacker changed the file timestamp for this file to to 2006, for example, to to avoid forensics. Then this malware has downloaded another malware, then he collected some data, he saved them in a folder, he sent them, he exfiltrated them, and then he deleted this file, he deleted some, he had some configuration files, he deleted them, he downloaded additional modules, and so on. So you have all of this information, and luckily all this information stays on the disk, hopefully it stays uh, for a longer time. In the master file table uh, doesn't delete files or like it doesn't delete the entries for files the files and when you delete a file the only thing that happens is that the file is marked as um, as uh, as a variable or the the entry in the master file table is marked as an in as a, this 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 file is a variable is deleted but the file information is not deleted and as well the file content on the hard disk is not deleted uh, sorry, I skipped something. I know that you may be lost. Master file table includes all the information about all the files on the hard disk. It's like entries represents each entry represents a file uh, or a, or a folder inside your your hard disk. And when a file is being deleted, it's just marked as deleted, but the entry is not deleted from the master file table, and as well the content is not deleted, but they may be overwritten with another file later on. So. With that, you may find some malicious files. All of them, uh, all of their information is still there. Their content, the, the the entry itself in the master file table, you might find you might find all of this data in still in the master file table, and still on the hard disk. And uh, if you might uh, remember, there was file craving tools applications that actually gets all the deleted files from your hard disk. And you do exactly this. So this is one thing, and you can also use them to get lots of information about the timestamps. And uh, if this file has been modified, when it has been modified, when it has been accessed, when it has been changed, um, and this different from has been modified, uh, it's basically the entry itself has changed, and so on. So all of this information, all of these timestamps. And some things the attacker can modify them easily, some interests he can't really easily change them. And with that, you can find if there's uh, some uh, things that the, that the, when the attacker tried to do some anti forensics, you can still detect uh, the actual timestamp and you can still detect these uh, samples when exactly they have been dropped on this machine, despite all the, the techniques the attacker used to remove the, or to make this file as, as old or it's not already there, which is a famous technique used by lots of malware to make sure that they avoid the forensics. Apart from the master file table, you have the, uh, you have other logs inside the operating system, which is the change logs, which, uh, which is the logs of while all, about all the files have been created, has been changed. It's, these logs are small, they don't keep they don't stay for long, long time. Not all the changes happens on, that happens on the whole hard disk for so long. It's just some few changes is being kept in the in the change logs. Uh, you can you can check them in the Windows Forensics. You have the volume shadow copies, which is something else as well, which is all the the snapshots of the. Um, or all the checkpoints that you can return back to to make sure that you return back to a system that's working. When when there is an installation that goes wrong, you can revert back to a snapshot of the operating system, and they are being saved. So you can see uh, changes that happened on the system earlier and now. The prefetches and the the prefetches basically are some files 
that has information about all the processes that have been running at least once. It keeps, I think, uh, 30 or 120, I don't remember, as uh, like an amount of processes that have been running in the last uh, few days. And the idea is that it, it keeps some information about all the loaded files. So the, the file name, the whole path for this file, and as well, sometimes some of the files that have been loaded in the first 30 seconds. And these prefetches can be really, really helpful to understand what exactly um, what exactly processes have been running recently. And you, may fi you might find the malware there, and you might find some information about it, you might find the command line, and so on. So, uh, prefetches are not allowed by default or not enabled by default in SSD machines, but with HDD, they are allowed and they are there. The event logs with all the events that's happening on the system, you can find so many information about all the uh, processes have been created, about uh, with their command lines, you have as well all the domains that have been accessed, you have so much of information information uh, up there in the event logs registry entries have been modified everything so it's really really good information uh, data streams um, as you know which was common uh, in the past that you can actually create an alternative data stream to any file and uh, this file itself has multiple files inside it which was a long with a with a was a big thing in the past you can check it out and at the end you can also check the registry entries um, through the Windows Forensics because all the registry are saved in some files on the hard disk it's called hives and these files is basically like any user to that this has all the, uh, the 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 user's registry key and or the the main user the current user registry key and you can take that file and basically read the registry and see what exactly is being saved in the registry. That's Windows Forensics. Um, and as we said, the main goal is to create the timeline and, and to determine what is the root cause of this incident, how it happened, how, um, how the whole infection started and what's exactly the story of this attack on this machine and uh, restore all the samples, get, collect all the samples, all the malicious files, and uh, all the artifacts, uh, all the IOCs, and to use them for the, for the detection for this attack. This is for the Windows Forensics. And uh, the main tools uh, we mostly use is Autopsy. It's a very famous tool. There are many tools you can use, and mostly are small scripts. But uh, some of the known ones, some are like Autopsy, which collects all of this information. And above it, there is something called Blasio, which uh, basically creates a, a timeline for all the activities that happened on the machine. It's not like, uh, it doesn't have everything inside it. So there's, uh, there are also some other tools that you would be using. Uh, Sans, uh, they have a, a cheat sheet, which includes all the tools and all the small scripts. So you can check it out as well. Basically, Windows Forensics is not very hard to learn, especially for malware analysis. It, uh, it's, um, it's just running some specific tools and collecting some artifacts, and then you have uh, some tools that create the whole timeline, and you can see all the changes that had happened on this system, and you can collect all of this information together. So, Windows Forensics is not... Uh, it's very in-depth science, and it's a it's a it's a whole science by itself. But for malware, is not you don't have to learn everything about Windows Forensics to learn malware analysis, to learn malware incident response. So this is Windows Forensics, and now we will go to the Memory Forensics. Memory Forensics, the main goal of it. Now you have the memory itself. You can see all the injected, all suspicious processes that are running. All the injected DLLs, the injected uh, code, the the volatile information like what is the network connections that are happening, which processes are connecting to these IPs, what are the commands that have been executed in the CMD, what are the uh, the 
PowerShell commands, what are the public private keys that are still in the memory? Sometimes some uh, uh, some decryption keys for uh, for ransomware or something like that. What are the decrypted strings, uh, attacker commands, and lots of other information that are only resides in the memory and they will be all gone if you start the machine. There is a tool for the analysis called volatility, which does all these searches for you. You just run, you just give it the command it will give you all the information about uh, it will give you all the things that you have seen here's for example it shows some api hooking it's a it's an advanced technique in malware and it says what exactly the command has been hooked what's the story and the whole thing and here's all the assembly code as well with memory analysis which comes um malware analysis and memory forensics are mostly comes together the malware analyst does the memory forensics and the malware analysis. Uh, he may or may not do the digital forensics as well, but mostly he does the memory forensics and the, the, the malware analysis. And the questions that the malware analysis answers is that, what exactly the malware does? We have a sample. What this malware does? What is the capabilities gives to the attacker? And uh, another important question, how it communicates to this attacker? Does it use a, a CNC? Does it have other hidden C CNCs or uh, command and control, like uh, uh, another domains that it tries to connect to or another IPs that it tries to connect to? And it doesn't connect to until they found, um, like until the, the first IP is not responding or the first domain is not responding. Does it, does it generate domains and what's the algorithm it, it uses to generate domains? Does it do peer-to-peer -peer communication? Does it use other channels like uh, some websites to get a list of new uh, CNCs or new domains and IPs like uh, or using Twitter channel? There was a malware, uh, I think Cozy Bear or something like that, that was using Twitter uh, channels to uh, uh, to receive, uh, like to using Twitter account. There was a Twitter account that tries to connect you and it gets all the tweets and each tweet it decrypted it decrypts it in a specific way and after it decrypts it it gets some new domains that it connects to some new uh, domains to reach the attacker with so they're using twitter channels some are using reddit some are using paste pin and so on and also one uh, one goal for malware analysis is to collect all the iocs that even the the uh, the ADR or the antivirus wasn't able to catch. You gather all the IOCs about this malware, so it can help to remove all of its uh, all of its um, footsteps inside any organization, and help to detect this malware in any other uh, machines. So, how malware analysis looks like? You have the basic static analysis. Um, which basically, basic static analysis is a basic triage for the sample. We check the sample if it's, uh, we check it against some signatures to know if it's packed. If it's packed, we, we decompress it. Then we look at the text, the, all the text inside this binary file. It, the exe file is a binary file, but if you open it in, uh, there's some tools that will collect all the text inside this binary file, all the strings. And these strings can include so much of information that you just by reading them, you can understand so much about this malware. Like, let's say, here's one malware, and you can see here's the IP, you can see uh, you can see some uh, error uh, messages here, like notice something and then unable to comply, or get host uh, and save as, uh, unable to create socket. HTB, it looks like it's using HTB. We see here some different things related to HTB commands. And then you see here so so much of, it looks like names of commands, like uh, saved as this, spoof s, and uh, this is how it takes, like it looks like an IP, like a number, then dot a number, dot number, dot number, or here's spoof uh, s and uh, IP dash IP. Uh, I don't know what's that. Uh, Nick, which is for nickname, mostly used, was common to be used in IRC long, long time ago, and so on. So we see lots of strings, and through through these strings, we can understand what possibly the malware is doing, right? Without even going into all in-depth code analysis, we just look at the strings, 
and we we do understand what is what it's doing beside the strings we can look also on the windows commands that's inside this file so uh, for for any application to to be able to do any activity like downloading file opening uh, downloading um, from a url opening files deleting files executing commands it uses windows commands to do uh, uh, to do all this stuff for him so basically any application can do all of these activities without using some windows uh, commands which is called apis and this api looks like this so for any um, like let's say if the malware wants to download a file it will use a, a command called url download to file this is a windows command that basically downloads a file uh, from the internet using the the url for that for that file let's say um, google.com slash or uh, malware.com slash file.exe and where you want to save this file i want to save it in the uh, let's say in the temp or in the program files so it takes the the url and it takes the path where it will save the file uh, you have something like winxec which is the highlighted one uh, and this command execute a comment or execute an application and just by looking at these uh, commands you can understand what this malware possibly doing so this one looks like it downloads a file possibly in the temp because it gets the, the temp folder or in the windows directory we don't know and it executes this file if if this is the same one as this one now we know that it down, maybe downloads from this ip or maybe it executes also these commands right so with both the strings and the windows commands we can understand a lot about the malware from this information we can start to run the malware and look at the behavioral analysis so we run the malware either in a known sandbox like a cuckoo sandbox that runs the malware gives you all the information what exactly it did or you can do it by yourself on your own uh, machine on your or on your own vm and you can see what is the behavior that this malware is doing so you saw that it tries to download from a file uh, it does try to download from a url it downloaded this file it executed that file and then it, it tries to execute that command and stuff like that so from the behavioral analysis and from the from the basic static analysis from both of them you will be able to answer so many questions about this malware you, you will you will be able to understand so many things but there's two things here you may not have the full information about uh, each of these behavior or you might have something that's a bit unclear like some behavior that you are not sure about let's say what are the commands that the malware is receiving uh, maybe the attacker didn't send you any command but you need to know what all the possible commands the malware is uh, using which leads to the next part which is the code analysis and for code analysis you have two types of code analysis either dynamic code analysis or uh, or dynamic uh, or static code analysis for dynamic code analysis it is similar to the behavior analysis but this time you not only run the malware you also monitor the, the the changes that's happening in the memory you stop the malware on specific points inside the code and you monitor what is happening what is the changes happening in the memory maybe some uh, strings that were encrypted and has been decrypted maybe um, some parameters that you want to know like you can stop at the write file command for example this is one of the windows commands it's called write file and you can see what exactly the data this has been written to that file or you can stop at delete file and before that being executed you can copy that file before it's been deleted so uh, you can do lots of things with dynamic analysis and with dynamic analysis it might sound like lots of lots of code and lots of things you can't really understand but if you look here you mostly want to examine the memory uh, if you see here like for example you see here there is an uh, there is a domain up here there is some uh, different uh, information like here an IP here's um, an exe file here's the path 
another path temp here we don't know what's that maybe a password or something and so on so you have all of this information that you, that you tr that you start to see in the memory and dynamic analysis is not as much about code as more about memory and what's happening in the memory also from uh, dynamic analysis you can stop on some commands and see what are the parameters that, that, that these commands are taking. Let's say something like create process. Create process is a command that basically uh, executes an application and giving the command line for that application. And you stop here and you see the command line up here. So you see here, let's say it was NS lookup and it has some domains. So it looks for these domains. So because I see lots of people get overwhelmed when they see all of that code and looks very, very scary, but it is not. What you need to know is very basic things. Is the name, it, what are the commands that you are looking for? What are, the, uh, what are the strings and what are the changes in the memory that you look for? And with dynamic analysis, under static analysis, you are looking for uh, for some uh, some clues, some evidences, some specific things inside the whole bile of code. We don't read all of this code. For for me, for example, I don't read that code. I stop on the commands that I want to analyze because I already know them from the basic static analysis and the behavior analysis. And I look for exact information that I want from these commands for specific parameters, changes in the memory, and some specific steps that I follow. The same uh, here, for example, right? I'm stopping on a specific command, which is um, create process again. And here, the command line is basically this uh, malware, which is drydex.ex underscore. Drydex is a known malware. Um, I think it's a banking Trojan, if I remember. And um, and you can see here the name of the command, create process, and you can see the, the process have been created. So this is the main thing about dynamic analysis. Similar thing, you here you can see program is not registered, the, the combination is incorrect. And there's here a command that does the check. And uh, this command, you can ch change it uh, from uh, being, let's say, jump if, if equal, to jump if not equal or not jump at all and then make the program is always registered for example so you can do some code batching and you can able to um, to change the code you can able to change the behavior of the application and we do that when we do when we deal with some advanced techniques like anti-reverse engineering techniques and stuff like that we do some a little bit of batching when it comes to static code analysis, it is even this, uh, it's even easier because the tools that we use is even easier to use like uh, IDA Pro, which gives you a nice graph of all the activities being happening. Here's a check here and it goes in this direction, which is success internet connection, or it goes here, there's error, no internet. And from that, we are able to understand, okay, here he checked for internet. So internet get connected state, that's a command, Windows command, which is checks for the internet state and it goes here or there. So it helps us to read the code and find what we or, or find what we are searching for and able to understand the behavior with all these uh, small blocks. It's also, um, and as I want to say, it doesn't need really a special skill to understand the code analysis because we do search for specific clues. Here, lots of code, but we don't have to understand all that code. Here's a command called create process, and here the name of the process. Here, git module file name is basically gets the file name of the application. So here gets the file name, here creates a service with this name, we understand that it creates a service. It may still, you may still be overwhelmed right now with the look of the code, but once you dig deeper into it, it's not that difficult because you mostly look for specific clues. You are not really reading every single line of the code. Uh, here's a similar thing. Copy file. From all of that code, you see copy file, the name of the new file, the name of the existing file. You see what file has been copied, where to where. Very simple. 
here's the same thing you see an ip you see connect you know what you're, what's happening around and so on so when you are doing uh, uh, malware um, malware analysis you basically you need to know the 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 concepts of course of the how everything works how the malware works you need to be able to read code not to actually um, not to actually write code and you need to know what to what you are looking for and uh, and how to find what you are looking for so you're looking for specific evidences for specific clues with the basic static analysis and the dynamic analysis you understand the um, you understand a lot about the malware and from that you start to only search for specific things inside the code so you don't read the whole code you don't dive so deep into it and then um, again i want to talk about the idea of code uh, analysis because lots of people they believe that to learn malware they have to have programming skills and this is holds lots of people back but i want to tell you uh, Mahmoud Morsi, who are actually one of my really good students, is really, really impressive. And he did an, uh, an amazing analysis for for really very known uh, attacks, for very known malware like Emotet, not BT, I want to cry. He did analysis for all of them. And he's not actually a programmer. He's He understands the programming concepts, but he's not a programmer. And there is a really big difference between able to read code and between really or understanding the programming concepts and actually finding clues uh, and so there's a big difference between reading code or understanding the concepts and between actually writing code writing code could be really difficult could be very overwhelming uh, but just reading it or just finding some clues inside that code could be way way easier and malware analysis sh just require you to understand how code looks like understanding the programming concepts able to read code in a way to be able to find some clues like this uh, commands that we were searching for like connect uh, a copy file with all this uh, information inside it that's that is possible right i think that is possible i know that it looks overwhelming the assembly code but once you understand the programming concepts and you understand what you're looking for inside it it will be so much easier so this is for malware analysis after that you have the containment phase which basically as we said it works hand in hand with the whole investigation and the main goal is to is to leave any footstep for the attacker inside the organization which includes isolating the compromised machine reset the compromised account re-image or disinfect all the infected or compromised machines and later is the remediation which verify that the whole containment and the whole uh, investigation has been done there is no more footstep for the attacker inside the organization and they also focus on what is the the things we need to do to improve the organization uh, security uh, measurements so we make sure that uh, this attack doesn't come again at last we have the reporting phase which basically answer these questions that we have mentioned earlier answer all of these questions and have a really professional report that is not very technical is not very in-depth technical but looks really professional and uh, and it answers it it has the answers for all of this question sorry uh it has the answers for all of these questions in an easy way to find. When the series or open the report, he's able to find the answer for his questions in the like in the first glance. He doesn't have to dig so deep into the report and read hundreds of pages to be able to find the answer for these questions. The same for every single team. And once you you write your report then the whole investigation, uh, the whole uh, malware answer response has been done. And I hope that you understood what exactly. Um, so as we said, the reporting is an ongoing process. It could be a court evidence by itself. And it helps also to, to have the lessons learned so we can improve our security measurements for the future. And it's really important. Every incident needs a report because this is the way that you cover your tracks later on you don't need to be after 
few months or one year or two years, somebody asks you about this incident and you don't know what to answer. You need to have a report that shows him, okay, that's what has been done on this attack. This is what has happened. This also helps to share information with other teams, with the other, uh, with the other parts in the organization and as well with the other organizations that might be affected or might also be vulnerable to this attack. That's for the whole incident response process. I hope that I didn't take too much time. I know that I have been like covering a lot of information. But now, uh, yeah, this is uh, like a very interesting quote that what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. So this is the goal for incident response is that this attack will not kill the organization. How we can use it to make us more strong and makes us better and makes us more protective against the next attack. And this is the main goal of the answer response. So last topic I will focus, I will talk about today is the threat hunting. And then I will go to the next steps and where to learn all of what we have mentioned. So for threat hunting, threat hunting is very similar to the answer response. People like I, I, I really see, I saw lots of information about threat hunting, different books, articles, uh, presentations, trainings, and uh, there's lots of people who really lose the point. Threat intelligence, uh, threat hunting is basically, it's an incident without an incident. It's a proactive step. I remember that uh, uh, I worked in threat hunting. I actually did threat hunting before threat hunting was even a thing. We, I created a tool called Advanced Threat uh, Detection inside uh, my organization at that time. And we did lots of, uh, we did actually threat hunting. And it is basically, it is like that. It's a proactive validation of the network integrity. That sounds like nobody can understand this sentence. But the meaning of it is that we make sure that there is no uh, incident. And... Uh, there's no there's no attack that we didn't see in the alerts. It is basically assuming there is an attack already happened. Assuming that we have an alert, now we do the investigation. If we look back at the whole incident response process, the detection phase is the only difference between threat hunting and incident response. The detection phase is basically about a specific. Uh, we we think that we had a spear phishing attack. We think so. Let's investigate on that. Let's do the investigation and we do the incident response process. If we find, we go and move on. So what is the goal for threat hunting? Why we do investigation if there's no, uh, where we do investigation if there's no incident? And the reason is that there is a, there is a big issue. We see a lot in malware attacks that in most of the attacks, which is mostly malware attacks too, but anyway, the, the main problem is that the, the gap between the, the, the like, the, the attacks comp bypass all the protections. They get into the organization. Once they get into the organization, between the time they have bypassed the, the protection, all the protection have been used in the organization, all the firewalls, um, IDS, IPS, EV, whatever the tools are, when you bypass them, it takes maybe like six, eight months until it has been detected. Like I, I remember, I'm not sure about the exact number, but I remember that it was around eight to nine months uh, on average for a data breach until it has been detected. So the attacker is inside the organization for eight, nine months collecting information, stealing information, and collecting terabytes of data over the course of time without being actually detected. So the threat hunting, uh, the rule of threat hunting is to decrease that gap. And it is basically, it's all about based on hypothesis that we might be actually attacked, but we don't know. Let's investigate that. And this is this is what's threat hunting in, in general. The difference between Threat hunting and normal detection. You have detection, you have alerts that the SOC team has been, uh, that, that they receive, but it's mostly signature based. They do detect based on some signatures, like 
uh, let's say a malware uh, IRC uh, hash a domain on IP a specific activity or uh, or let's say um, more than 10 uh, 10 tries to uh, 10 tries to log in with an account 10 failed uh, user accounts uh, tries right so it deals with uh, IRCs it's very reactive once there's an alert we do act but we don't act based on uh, we don't do proactively uh, um, again it is based on tools there's tools who do all the the alerts and they do provide the uh, based on signature they do all the scans uh, on all the ircs they have they provide the information and it's a fully automated type of detection so there's an there's a a signature based on a specific malware, based on a specific attack, based on a specific domain, or a specific, um, let's say, um, activity. And this signature, when it triggers, the, it's, it's being sent to the SOC analyst who deals with it. This is a traditional detection. Third hunting is a bit different. So it is not based on signature, it is based on behavior. So it, it, it basically deals with what possibly could be an attack? Let's say um, an attacker used the tactic that is, uh, he used initial access, we will cover the tactic which is called initial access. We will be covering the technique that he sent a spear phishing with, uh, with an attachment. And this attachment, this attachment, uh, ha uh, it was actually a, a document, a malicious document that includes some macro code, that includes some, uh, of course, some uh, macro script. And uh, how we can detect that behavior? So threat hunting is based on the behavior, or based on the on the tactics or techniques and procedures. If you remember this major um, attack map that we we had at the beginning of the of the whole thing when we're describing the attack, this is the map. This is basically the uh, that the threat hunting is based on. The big one of these attacks in the one of these. Uh, tactics, techniques, or procedures, they pick one of them and they say, okay, we will hunt on this tactic. We will hunt on this step. We will assume that there is a PowerShell command that has been executed by, by an attacker. There is a lateral movement. He used the Mimikatz to dump the passwords. So we assume, not of course the Mimikatz itself as a, as a file, if we are using its hash or using a signature for it, then we are doing a traditional detection. But if we are trying to detect uh, password dumping in general, uh, then threat hunting is the way that is being done. So it is again, it's not based on evidences, it's based on a hypothesis uh, that there is an attack, it's a hypothesis, it's a, just a, a theory or imagination and we try to prove it. It's a proactive, it doesn't wait until there's an alert. It's a human driven, it's, a, it's basically a person, a threat hunter, who put the hypothesis, who basically go and investigate. And it can't be fully automated because it's a human driven. It's an hypothesis that's a human who creates it. Once he hunt once, he can automate this hunting process and take the whole hunting process and put it in the traditional detection as a new alert. So he scans against the spear phishing with a malicious document, he find a way how to detect that through the logs. He scans the logs in a specific way, he digs deeper. And with that, he is able to find, uh, 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 he is able to create a tool that can do all of that automatically. And he then move this tool to the traditional detection. It gives an alert to the SOC team and the SOC team uh, take an action based on that. This is basically threat hunting. Threat hunting, it has the same thing about an instant response. You can't learn threat hunting without learning instant response or especially without learning malware analysis. Because if you don't understand how malware acts, you will not be able to hunt for it. You will not be able to find what are the techniques and, and the tactics that this malware is using, how it maintains resistance, how, it, uh, it, uh, how the malicious document looks like, what commands it executes, how PowerShell code, how malicious PowerShell commands looks like, 
what it does, how the malware communicates to the CNC. All of these tactics, techniques, and procedures that the malware are using, these are the things that you are hunting against. You need also to understand the logs that you have, all the options that, that you have to be able to dig deeper into the, the organization. Um, I don't know if I have this slide. Yes. So the types of threat hunting, there are three main types of threat hunting. You have the network-based threat hunting, which is based on the logs. You, it's, it's basically, uh, it's based on two things. So it is trying to hunt for, let's say, for the CNC, for the common control, for how the, the malware communicates to the attacker. You may look at some logs like firewalls, IDS, IPS, or you may look at the whole uh, network flow using Zeek, uh, or what used to be called Pro. Uh, and um, it it is it helps to detect some um, some communication with the CNC, something like what they call beaconing. When a malware tries to communicate to the to the to the malicious domain, let's say malware.com, which is the which is the attacker website, the malware tries to connect to malware.com every 15 minutes. It sends a, a connection request to to this domain every 15 minutes to make sure there's no new commands from the attacker and every 15 minutes more or less it sends this request and this is this type of behavior this is like every 15 minutes there's a connection to this domain it could be malicious it could be uh, an update like a tool that tries to update itself or it could be a malware that is trying to connect to the attacker it's not a human way of communicating there's no human who connect to a website exactly every 15 minutes but there are lots of malware who does so. This is called beaconing, and it could be a good way to detect um, any communication with a CNC. Also, long connections are connection that stays for a long time. And if you know networking very well, uh, with TCB, there is a TCB handshake, and then there is like a, a packet at the end that, that closes the connection that says this connection has been finished, like two packets at the end. And uh, between the handshake and between the finishing brackets, between the start of the communication and the end of this connection, it has been hours. If it's a really hours and long, long time, that's, that is also an indication that it possibly be a, a communication and malware communicating to the attacker. So there are multiple techniques. And network-based threat hunting is a big topic. There is the endpoint-based threat hunting, which based on some... Uh, on Memory forensics is based on some uh, logs inside the machine, which is like the event logs or Sysmon, which is a free tool that also uh, correlates some information between different logs. You have the ADR, the endpoint detection response. It also has lots of information and lots of logs. That could also include um, some memory forensics, image forensics, service engineering, and so on. And from that, you can come up with a hypothesis that's related to uh, a malware inside a machine, and you try to prove this hypothesis in the first place. There is another type of threat hunting which is based on the application layer, which is, okay, there's any SQL injection, there's any uh, 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 remote code execution that has been done on the web, or there are on other surfaces like FTB or SMTB or uh, IMAP or IE, whatever. So all these protocols, the application-based threat hunting is based on. So for threat hunting, it is so close to instant response. It has more to do with logs, more to do with a little bit of scripting because you do on uh, on multiple machines at the same time, mostly. So it is a mix between all of that. But the main, the, the main heart of it is to understand the malware attacks and understand all the tactics, techniques, and procedures and from there, you're able to come up with a correct hypothesis and a correct way to detect this uh, or to prove this hypothesis, prove that there is an actual compromise, or if there is no actual compromise, you can automate the whole thing later on with the scripting to make it a real detection. So this is basic, basically threat hunting. For the time being, I think there is no... Uh, really a good book that covers the topic in depth and in correct way. I am reading in a new book called uh, Blue Team Handbook. That's a, new that's a new book. It has so many different things. 
Uh, it has a little bit about threat hunting. It's a new book. I'm not sure if it's uh, if it's a good book or not. I can't recommend it yet. But let's see. And I'm studying a lot in threat hunting as well as uh, I'm trying to find what are the best sources for information and I will tell you once I found good sources. But for the whole incident response process and for malware analysis, what are the best ways to learn that? How to, what are the next steps? How to dive deeper into all of this? How to gain the skills? How to be that expert? We talked at the beginning of the presentation that if, if you want to shortcut your success without going through certificates, CTFs, years of experience, hopefully to get into a good point, if you want to jump directly and make the jump and be really good, be a real expert in cybersecurity or at least seen as an expert by the managers, by the companies, getting some managers to actually message you and ask you to work with them, you need to know what are the biggest threats that companies are facing, which is malware attacks, you need to be able to 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 uh, to uh, protect, you need to have the skills to, to be able to protect organizations from these type of attacks. The skills are the incident response or the malware incident response. These are the main skills that are required right now. And I'm telling you because I see the market, I see what's happening, I'm not telling you some fluff. I know what is being sold in the market. I see people who are selling lots of interesting courses, lots of uh, so sexy stuff, IoT uh, hacking. Oh my God, I have bought IoT hacking books. I have seen all the tools that are being sold in DEF CON with all the different, uh, uh, like this lamp and this these different smart devices and looks really cool and it's like $1,000 the box and I have tried to get my company to buy it and they never did. But with all of these things, they are really interesting. But is it the real uh, threat right now? Is it the way for you to work in a big company? The answer is no. The, the real answer, not even web bug hunting. Web bug hunting is great, is awesome. It's really interesting. I love it. I have lots of friends who are really experts in that. However, it's not the best way. This is not the big threats that our companies are facing. What I'm telling you now is what is really in the in the in the market. This is the attacks. This is the impact of them. You see the ransomware attacks, the spear phishing, the whole meter attack, and the whole incident response. And at the end of the day, every company has to have a blue team. Has to have the team that responds to attack. They don't have to have their team. They can outsource from time to time and uh, um, bin testers to uh, to test their security. Uh, tools, but they need to have a team that able to act fast and respond to any attack when it happens. So every organization needs to have a blue team. This is where most of the hiring is. Not in the bin testing, because bin testing is good. Bin testing, I love it. But at the same time, this is only some organizations that have the bin testing and they do bin testing from time to time in different organizations. So anyway, how to learn? What exactly the sources that you can learn from these skills? There are multiple sources. And um, as I said uh, last week, actually, in, um, in an interview, an Arabic interview, the way to learn, there's two paths you should go at the same time. First, you need to have the prerequisites is that you need to understand a little bit of network uh, network you need to understand the network basics not the ccna but maybe something like network plus uh, not the certificate of course but to understand protocols HTTP, HTTPS, dns all of these protocols you need to have the basics of cyber security what are all the tools what is what's antivirus what's malware what are the what's all the tools that are being there the firewall the ids the ips hopefully you already understand them because you may not understand this presentation if you will reach until this point and you don't know these tools if you know them that's great that's enough if you don't check security plus check ceh they will give you the basics once you have the prerequisites once you have these two the third is to understand how to read code maybe very very simple very beginner c um, course very very beginner one you don't have to read to write code so you have to only understand the basics what is function what is loop what is if else all of these basic programming concepts what is variable uh, what is uh, all of this information once you have the very 
then you need to dive into the uh, you have to go into two paths at the same time learning reverse engineering and the best sources is these two sources um, reversing the secrets or reverse engineering and the reverse engineering for beginners the reversing the six the secrets of reverse engineering this is the book that i learned from and i learned a lot from it but it's a very very old book it's i think back to 2000s or 2002 something in that range it's really really old but it's oldie but goldie it's really good reverse engineering for beginners is a complete free book you can download it from beginners.re and uh, it's a it's a massive book you need to focus only on the assembly language of x86 or uh, or 32 bits intel 32 bit this is the one that you need to focus on um just to mention 64 is still not widely widely used it's not very different from the 32 but it is not widely, widely used that you have to learn it and replace the 32. 32 is still the most common in all the malware stuff. To learn, um, this is the this is one direction. Uh, reversing tickets, reverse engineering, and reverse engineering for beginners, which you will learn simply and reverse engineering as well. And the second part, and both in parallel, even the other part could be the beginner. The beginning is the is to learn malware analysis. You have the practical malware analysis or learning malware analysis. Both books are really great. Uh, I recommend learning malware analysis as it's a new book uh, and uh, updated. It also covers memory forensics. Uh, and it really works well with the next book, which is Mastering Manual Analysis book, which is the book that I wrote. And this book really dives so in depth into the code analysis and so into so many different things. It also works as a reference for you in any uh, uncommon or rare case, especially when you want to analyze Android malware, IoT, um, Linux, Mac, uh, other scripting languages. It includes a reference for if for every scripting language, all the commands that you you might encounter inside them, and what's the meaning of them, what to search for, and so much of information. So learning malware analysis and mastering malware analysis together are really really work great together. They're really really good. And uh, with reversing uh, books, it's really uh, I think that this both combination are really enough. So these four books or three of them, like these two, and maybe uh, reversing reverse engineering for beginners. The These two are good for the Windows internals, identifying malicious code through reverse engineering. The first part of this book, this, this book is small, it's like 260 pages, something in that range. The first part of that book is really good. It's uh, about Windows internals, it's very small, it's not really big, so you can read that part and it's, uh, it's, it's really it's really great. Windows internals is a reference, you just use it for reference if you want to dive deeper into a specific topic, but you don't read that book, you just have it somewhere in the shelf. And uh, instant response and computer forensics, that is really good to cover the instant response and computer forensics, which makes sense. Uh, this book is quite old, but it's really great as well. And will help you also some sans uh, cheat sheets for forensics, for digital and memory forensics, which includes all the commands. Lear and memory forensics is completely covered in learning malware analysis book. So if you grab this book, you'll be able to learn memory forensics from it. I didn't recommend anything for threat hunting, as I told you, but this information are really good. These books are really, really good for you to learn instant response, malware analysis, and that will build you the foundation, the main foundation that you need for threat hunting. If you, uh, ah, and then you have all the tools. Now you need to practice. There are multiple ways to practice. Uh, for reverse engineering, there's a website called crackmeans.de uh, This has been down, but there's uh, an archive link here, crackmeans.cf slash archive, which includes all the um, uh, all the crack means you can practice. There's from level 1 until level 10. You can practice on any of them, try to reverse engineering them. The EBT notes that I told you about, that includes all the attacks that, uh, that has been happening from 2000. Uh, from 2020 from from now all the years back i think even before 2016 i think 
from 2014 until now uh, and you can look at these articles look at the samples you have the hashes search in this uh, search for these hashes in hybridanalysis.net or any.run you may be able to find them you can download them and analyze them and also if you want to, to do some memory forensics uh, you can find uh, in this link some things for volatility I didn't find a really good source for malware computer forensics like disk image forensics once I find I will put the link there so this is if you want to learn by yourself as I wrote here DIY it's the do-it-yourself it might take you so long time for me it took me three years at least to learn that I started learning um, from the time that I started learning malware and malware analysis was exactly in 2000 I don't remember 2006 I think on my first year in the university and uh, Stuxnet's uh, analysis I did it on the last year of, of the university so it took me almost five years trying to learn all of that but the good news is that you don't need to do all of this yourself anymore I actually can help you myself I have I really have created a really really a complete program like I spent two years just just developing that program it's really really impressive training that covers all what you need about instant response about malware analysis about even threat intelligence it has lots of information it covers from like it covers the whole process from the detection we still don't have for digital forensics but we'll add this very soon and it covers all the malware analysis from basics to advanced we even cover the prerequisites like uh, basics uh, of programming basics of networking basics like we cover as much as we can it's really an impressive training and if you don't mind i will walk through i walk you through the the training um very fast show you what exactly we have because seriously this is the best training you can ever find on the planet and i i'm not saying i'm not saying that because i want to sell you something like i really put all my my experience all my effort everything inside this training like i have been doing this presentation and today with what we have in this training i'm not uh, like i can be proud more of of this training seriously like this is really impressive so what is this training is about so i have a training that is the main goal of this training it take to take you from complete beginner in, in malware analysis and coding in um, you just started maybe in cybersecurity, maybe you have some information about networking and it take you from there to be um, um, like an interview ready for a job in instant response and malware analysis and basically a person who is able to go from A to Z to respond to malware attacks. So what does this uh, training looks like? We have 11 modules. The first module we talk about the whole attack overview, like how we um, uh, how we did at the beginning of the, of the presentation. We cover everything you know, and we go in depth, and we also do analyze the real malware uh, in this module. Then we go to the incident response process. We we dive deeper into network forensics, into uh, into um, log analysis and what the questions that you need to answer in every single step and then we go to the malware analysis process and we here so we here dive way deeper into the malware analysis process we do actually uh, like see all the questions that we need to answer in every single step we cover the the basic static analysis uh, in depth the also the behavior analysis we do analyze a real sample in the in this module using basic basic static analysis and behavior analysis we also, after this module, we do uh, get into the code analysis and we start with like a, a basic C, um, C training that gives you all the basics for programming. So if you don't know anything about programming before, if you have never wrote uh, any line of code, this is what we'll be covering it. We cover, of course, all the simply and we do lots of exercises. After that, we go into the Windows internals. We do... Uh, analyze real malware together this is the fifth module and in this uh, sorry in this analysis uh, we take like two hours and a half or three hours we do analyze the whole malware together uh, completely so you get a real experience and it's actually a real attack from china moving forward we do um, cover the encryption the encoding the manual unpacking 
We cover multiple techniques for manual unpacking that covers most of the cases. We do go to the advanced level. We do uh, cover process injection, um, anti-reversing techniques. We do cover memory forensics. We do cover API hooking and shell code and exploits. We cover uh, kernel mode rootkits and uh, then we cover threat intelligence and a brief intro to machine learning so you know how to build your own a tool if you like to using machine learning what is the things that you need to uh, to think about and what are the resources to learn that we also uh, so yes where's this training for whom this training is it's for instant handler for people who are in SOC, people who are in digital forensics people who are interested in um, uh, who are starting in cybersecurity, they may have took security blast or network blast and they really want to get into the the field and they want to be like they want to get the most important uh, skill that's that is needed right now so they can shortcut their progress to to find a really good job to work somewhere uh, abroad if they want to or, or have this job security that they can move from one company to another um of course we talked about that you don't need to have a programming experience because we do cover that we only need that you have uh, a networking experience not in depth like not ccna maybe network plus understanding the different protocols like tcb udb um you understand http dns we do cover them as well but it is it's important that you know the basics about it and of course understand basic terminology such as peer phishing and malware and and attack i think we covered most of them in this presentation so you don't need more but like you would need to understand like what the whole cyber security is all about and um we actually like this 11 modules was actually our training at the beginning we only had this 11 modules as a training and uh, people were, were really blown away with the amount of content there uh, this is uh, yazid he was saying he was sending me that was on the new year and he was telling me that I, I have finished the Marvel and Us mindset program with full satisfaction. You did a fantastic job with more like six, with more than 60 hours of hands-on pr and practice, which makes it one of the rare courses out there. Let me say one of the best courses I ever had. And this is really what I believe in. Like this training is really impressive, but we didn't stop here. We actually provided even more things. So not only you get the modules, but as well, you get the Malware Analysis Lab VM, which is a virtual machine that includes all the tools, all the plugins they have, um, everything. You just need to import it in VMware Workstation or VirtualBox or Virtual BC. You just click import, and then you have this VM with all the tools inside it. You get, of course, all the samples. Plus, you get our Malware Analysis Workbook. And this workbook is really one of the most impressive things that I have created recently. I actually started writing in it in, in I think, around November. And it's really, really uh, an impressive workbook. So in this workbook, I cover, I added, like, I always say, like, this is a training by itself. Like, I added way more exercises, way more um, uh, exercises and their solutions for the whole training so for each module i add more i add more uh, exercises as you see here and more solutions i'll just try to show it to you so this is how uh, it looks like so you have like a uh, first like uh, what is this module is about and what are the steps that you need to follow to um, uh, to, like what videos you need to watch, what what pages in the book you need to read, what is the exercise you need to um, to solve, and there are so many different exercises, and everyone has like screenshots of what exactly each step means. Like here, a screenshot, another one, and um, as you see, like each module have lots of different exercises, and uh, the the thing here is that. I do cover all of these uh, exercises. Uh, the solution is following the exact same strategies as the training, but sometimes I, implement, I, I show you different tools, new tools, so you have more variety in, in how to do the same thing uh, with and find the way that, that suits you the best or find the tool that suits you the best. It's really impressive. I think it's, all, it's, it's almost 100 pages, 98 pages. 
maybe I'll add a cover and blah, blah, add an index to make it uh, 100. But anyway, so you have like, you can see like there's so much you can get in just this workbook and it will be added to the training for free once you purchase the training. This is, I never announced, this is the first time you see this one and it's it's really impressive. So you will get this one. If we go back, then you will get this workbook um, so you have the modules, you have the labs, you have the workbook, and as well you will have our Mastering Memory Analysis book. And this book took us like ages to actually write it. It took us six months. Me and uh, my colleague, uh, Alexey Kleminov, he's a senior malware researcher in Semantic, and he used to work as well in Kaspersky and Dr. Web, and he put all of his knowledge in this book, all of his launch and experience, the same as me. We made this book really, really impressive book. This is really like your malware analysis Bible. Not only to help you through studying malware analysis, but also to help you if you are stuck with any malware. If you are meeting a new malware with a new scripting language or a new platform, uh, you will find in this book a solution and find something that talks about that topic. So we cover IoT, um, we cover Android, we cover uh, Linux, we cover uh, of course, Windows, we do cover, un uh, we said about Android, we, we do cover iOS, um, Mac, we do cover so many different platforms, we do cover multiple la uh, scripting languages, we cover .NET, we cover Java, we cover even compiled Python, how to debug it, how to deal with it, we cover Visual Basic 6 because there's some samples that are still using it, I don't know how, we cover everything, and we cover um, Windows in depth, all the anti-reversing techniques, like 10 different uh, ways to unback a malware. We cover um, burst injection, API hawking. We do cover so many topics and we cover everything in depth. We also cover the decryption and how to deal with like complicated algorithms like public key encryption or things like that. We cover it so much in depth in that book. It's really an impressive book and we will deliver it to your home for free. That will be added as a bonus. So you get all the modules, you get the, the, malware, um, the, the malware analysis lab VM, you get the, the master malware analysis book. And in the workbook, we do give you like what exactly the videos that you want to watch, uh, that you should watch in the, in the, in the training. Then what is the, the page that you need to read in the book and what the exercises you need to, to, um, to follow. And we give you like step by step. So the workbook, really gives you like all the steps that you need to follow to be able to learn this module, where to practice and where to do um, everything. We do as well uh, add, like this is the we're working on right now, is to add assignments to all the trainings. So make sure that you go from one module to another, you really learn the skills. And we do give the, in these assignments also some samples and some things to analyze and some interesting stuff. So you will, there is no way you will not practice and practice and practice. And you will, there's no way you will not master the art. Like, seriously, like, there's nothing we can, like, there's nothing can make you learn more than what we are providing. Like, I, I, like, I put all the effort, I, like, all the ideas, like, videos, uh, hands on labs. I do it, I analyze them, uh, samples in front of you, real samples, real things in the wild. Then I do give you a workbook when I do the same analysis, like, analyzing other samples and other and other malware and I, I showed you how to do that in a text in like with the screenshots and so on and give you this as an exercise and the workbook includes also some samples that you will uh, uh, that you will be able to download separately uh, from the samples that are in the training and with all of this I also give you the, mal the mastering malware analysis book so you have all the tools after that, you should be able to, to really able to analyze any malware you see. Once you are in that level uh, and you have finished, if you analyze the real malware and you have finished it and now you want to show your case, you want to, to, to show your, um, your analysis in a really professional way that impress the managers, that answers the questions, um, of your, um, the questions of your of the CISO for the different managers for the incident response team for the SOC team for the vulnerability management team we added the mastering uh, and the malware analysis report template and this template like it, it really showcase your work in a very professional way that makes sure that you don't go into this techno bubble when they don't understand what you are talking about it makes sure that you really give them the information they need and 
it also shows that you know what is your job. Like the difference between amateur reverse engineer and professional malware analyst is that the professional malware analyst understands the meaning of the code he analyzes and understands what is the business impact on it. What is the 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 impact on on the assets of the of the company, the loss of uh, of money, how they should be contained, how they should protect against it, and this malware analysis report template gives you all of that. It gives you like it, it's just like it's a it's a template that you just fill the blanks with examples of how to fill these blanks, what the the most important things to cover here, and tips in every single step, the questions that you need to answer in every single place. So it's really 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 good. And I have reviewed also with Alex. I have reviewed with multiple people. I showed it first time on my uh, in my Malaysian training, and people were really blown away with it. You will get that for free as well. This has never been added to the training. It has been added for the first time today, and uh, so you will get all of that. Like seriously, like you have all the 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 training, 40 hours of content more than 20 hours of hands-on practice step by step then you get the Malona lab you get the mastering Malona book you get the workbook and then you get the the Malona report template and i want to tell you like this is actually really works like like only these videos like we only had these modules only at the uh, the beginning and with that we have we had really lots of successes from our students. We have here Abdul Rahman Yasser. He was telling me that with this program, he was able to land his first model and last job after graduation. He didn't. He was still a student when he started the training, and after graduation, in Trend the Micro as part of their instant response team. In Trend the Micro, if you don't know it, it's a really big antivirus company. It's very well known. Actually, it was was getting stronger than Semantic at some point. It was a really, really good company. And he worked with, the, with their instant response team. And let me tell you something. Like, I see lots of trainings out there, like Sans, Black Hat, and they charge like from five thousand to seven thousand or even ten thousand dollars. I see people who paid ten thousand dollars for a five days training with with Sans and then um, and Black Hat. I think it makes it for four days. But anyway, like I don't say that they are bad. Like, they are great training. They are really really great instructors. Are, but it is what is what you can learn in 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 five days. Like it just makes sense. Like this five days you can learn so much, but. There's a there's a step when you will stop and there will be you will not be able to to go from there from where you have learned like you have the foundation but you can't master it enough to be able to work in a company as a malware analyst and this gap you you feel lost and I know that and that's why I decided to create a training that actually covers from A to Z from from zero to hero so it really covers the advanced topics that no one of them has covering is being covering is actually covering and uh, I want to say that like like uh, like I want to really ask you a question like let's let's assume that I will charge exactly like them even my training is like three times more but let's assume that I will charge like them like five thousand or seven thousand I will not be charging you even close to that number but I'm just telling you that like like the question is it worth like the, is it worth the investment like I don't know about you but for me for example if if that what will take me from a mechanical engineering student to uh, to someone who's working in a in a in semantic after like from someone who's completely like completely far from his passion completely amateur to somebody who is professional who has this exposure who's being seen as an expert like that would be like that would be like you know, like it's, it's changing my life, like day to like day and night. You know, like they, like I would definitely pay that. Like I would definitely pay ten thousand dollars for that. If I had the money, I would have paid ten thousand dollars for that. I don't know a person who paid actually ten thousand dollars from his pocket for science training to to get into model analysis, and they, they are actually thirty percent. Like. And I see, I see that it works with people. Like I see people who are able to finally uh, analyze like real, really complicated malware. We have, as I told you, we have Amin who is able to analyze a malware that is a, a password locker, able to develop a crypto for it, and he's able to get in contact with with very high management in a really big company. Like 
I think even more sexier than Trend Micro. I wouldn't say the name of it, just to, to protect uh, his plans until it goes, all goes through. Still, things are a bit slow with the Corona, but things will pick up. And uh, I don't know about uh, about you, but like if that like if that will make you get from like from being totally new, like in a SOC team, like very like in, in just in the start, you work in a, as a contractor, you you have very low salary and and you don't have that job security because I know that about SOC like they really they can easily like lay people off and get some other people because for them everybody is, re- is replaceable. To get from there to be like in a in a position that you are being seen as an expert, people communicate with you as an expert, people respect you in that way, people really give you the salary that you deserve, the recognition that you deserve, and you feel like this job security because now you have a resume that has the most amount of the skill, and every time you talk to a manager, they take you seriously, you go to interviews, there's no a problem of being stuck searching for a job, like so many people who need that job security and i i see that and this is what basically could be your way like if if this ten thousand dollars or this five thousand dollars wouldn't would give you this job security would it be worth it like would be this training worth it so of course i wouldn't be charging you that but what i would but the price for that training what i would be charging you today is 997 for that training and uh, with all the added content i don't know if i will increase it uh, soon but with the, with this, with the situation of coronavirus, I decided I will not increase it in this presentation, but maybe in the, in the next one. But, um, here's the thing. It's now, it's now with 997, you can join through multitrack.com slash join. And, um, so you will get the whole, uh, modules, the model analysis lab, you'll get the master model analysis book, you'll get the workbook. And you'll get also the model analysis report template, and um, and we added one new thing, which is the model analysis real scenarios. And this is basically, sorry, and this is basically, I took the analysis. Uh, one of my students is called Mahmoud. He was a student like you, and he became really, really professional in model analysis. He analyzed Emotet, WannaCry, not Bitia, and they are three of the top malware that has been released in from 2000, let's say from 2017 or 18 until today. Actually, Imutet is being um, is being used today against, uh, like uh, to, to steal kid cars and it's, it's a banking trojan. And it's being used, uh, it's breeding through a coronavirus map and lots of people has, has been using this map, they're being infected with the malware and it's really creating a huge chaos until today you will get his analysis of this model, um, his, uh, the analysis of the samples, the full analysis on the samples have been reviewed by me. You will get his report. You will get as well the, the video uh, description of all the analysis of all of these samples. It's really, really impressive. You will get all the videos. You will get the, uh, as well, you will get the, the samples um, of each one. You will get the IDBs, you will get the full report. And the, the main goal here is that I took like the top three malware, like this is the top three malware that you would ever hear about. If you can analyze just one of them and have them in this professional malware analysis report template, you will get a massive exposure. Like this is enough for you to be, uh, to, to, to be, the, to have the next story like Stuxnet, right? For Mahmoud, he was, be con- he was contacted by F-Secure, by ESET. By uh, by Avera, by uh, by another American company. He actually worked in this company. I don't remember the name, and um, and other companies as well. He's been contacted with multiple companies. His his uh, report was being shared by one of the top magazines for um, uh, for malware analysis. Like this magazine is, it has a conference that all these big companies comes to. They also uh, they, they review antivirus companies and they review their products. This company is called Virus Bulletin, and they have been sharing his analysis on uh, on Emotet 
and he's uh, he has really impressive analysis you will you will get the full analysis of these samples not only the report is published online but you will get as well uh, the full analysis on the uh, on the code on the assembly code like all his all of his analysis on the code itself you will get uh, a video describing all the, the the pain points and how he analyzed them how he bypassed them so you will get to be in that level if you just if you just followed one of his analysis, just took Emotet for example, analyze this sample yourself. If you are stuck, you return back to his videos. After you finish all of this, you took your analysis, put it as a malware analysis report template, put it fill the blanks of this report template. You have a, the the strongest resume you can ever can ever be seen. Like seriously, you will be one of the top four percent of candidates have been applying to any answer response or malware analysis job. Like, like this is this is the key thing, right? It's not about certificates. It's not about years of experience. I didn't need all of that. The when you reach the managers themselves and you show them your work, like, what, like this is what he all he actually didn't do that. He got approached Mahmoud Morsi, but there's many people who does that. You just contact the manager, show them their work, show them their reports, their work. And their their skills that they have show a proof of it, and that's enough to get them into into interviews, into different jobs. And you don't need all of these things that's written in the in the job uh, uh, offer, because they don't need to to deal with the HR. They just go to the manager directly and say, okay, I have these skills. This is my my Maranas report on this malware, on Emotet, on WannaCry, on NotBit, on any new malware that will come next. And the thing here is that these real scenarios will add even more and more samples to it. Every single month, every single uh, few months, will be adding more and more samples. Will be adding their analysis. I will be adding as well my Stuxnet analysis to it very soon. So, like this is will be really really impressive, and this will complement the whole training because once you finish the training, you have the skills. Now you can apply it on real samples that really. Uh, hit the media by storm who really made a huge chaos and you will have the analysis of them in the in the real scenarios so you can analyze them but this free bonus you will not get it uh, if you apply if, if you didn't register uh, today or once you see this video live so here's the thing this video is live right um, if you are seeing it live or you are seeing the replay of it, because I will keep the replay for three, four days. If you are seeing the, the, this video, if you are seeing until this moment, you're seeing the, the live or you're seeing it, uh, replay, uh, the replay, you are still eligible to join this, uh, this real scenarios. Once, once this video will, will be taken, which will be taken very soon in the next three, four days, once it's taken from the, uh, for, from the, from all the lives on LinkedIn, on YouTube, once I take it down, you, this offer will be gone and it will not be open until the next live if I will have. So if you want to catch this real scenarios, you just have to register now. If you're seeing this video, you have to register today. It's maltrack.com slash join. Join now. And really, there is no best time to join such, like to, to actually start learning than today. Like you have all the... All the distractions have been cancelled, like meeting friends, going to party, going out, all the commute to work, going and back and backward, all the the lunch break with all of your friends. Like, all of this has been has been all gone. Now you have you have so much time to do one at least one thing for your career. Like so it's like even if you're joining this training or you are reading the books that are the resources that I given uh, that I give you earlier, like. This is the best time to plant the seeds for your future. The storm will be gone at some point. This storm will be gone. And all the companies will be hiring and will be hiring rapidly. And I am sure that the companies, Mauro and us companies or instant response companies, they will be hiring even in the middle of the storm because the attacks are increasing. The attacks are not stopping. Emotet and uh, Tricky Boot are being spread right now because everybody's shopping online and they want to steal their credit cards. Now everything is going online. Everything, the, the cybersecurity risks are increasing way more than ever. But after the storm, when the companies have even more money, they will be investing more. And the people who plant the seeds today, who will harvest at that time. This storm that we are in, this coronavirus situation, will stay for a few weeks or a few months or even a year. 
But after that, everything will be gone. At some point, everything will be gone and it will be back to normal. It will happen sooner or later. But what you harvest today for your future, what you will gain at that time. This is the best time. Like, I was listening to one of the guys who I'm learning from, it's called Russell Brunson, and he was, he had this manana principle. Like, like, like everybody is, is worrying today, is worrying about the situation, is having all the fear and is worrying about the, the whole thing today and living all the, all the, like, all the learning, all the, uh, all the books, all the, the resources, all the training is like, they're living everything later, the manana, like, oh, I will do this manana, I will do this later. And I will, I will be scared today. So why not to do something different? Why not to actually like change, them, exchange them? We do work today. We do study today. We do learn something today. We do join this training or reading a new book or, or learning something today. And we can worry tomorrow. And tomorrow we continue learning and we worry after tomorrow. And we just keep worrying later. Like keep the worry to manana. When, when you are free, after you are finished all the training, you learned everything, then you can worry in, in your own free time. But now is the time to work. Like I do work. I do study more. I have bought uh, a new book. It's called the Blue Team Handbook uh, that I'm that I will start reading. And also, I bought another book. It's called Instant Response and Computer Forensics, which I'm reading right now, which I recommended in the uh, in the uh, in, in the in the books that I recommended and this book I'm reading it already uh, I have finished like some parts of it and it's really impressive training impressive book so I'm starting to learn today I start to practice today I start learning and learning about AWS and joining some other projects I'm learning today I'm investing the time to learn something when all the distractions are being shut down and I will leave all the worry to later the, I will worry later I will worry I can worry tomorrow after tomorrow. I will worry in May, in June. It's okay. Now I will start work. So join now. Join this training, maltrack.com slash join. And uh, to, if, if you want to get the real scenarios, just write down in the in the live chat or in the YouTube comments or in the LinkedIn comments or Facebook. I don't know if there's anything still running. Just write in the comments that um, I... I purchased the program, please add me to the real scenarios and I will be adding you before I take down all these videos, I'll be adding everyone. So um, join today, I uh, hope to see you inside. Now, uh, yeah, before I finish, I want to tell you that there is a money back guarantee. Um, if you feel at any time that uh, this training is not for you, is not what you like, you have 14 days, no question asked, you can download the workbook, you can, you can you can download um, the VM. You can you can start studying and you can browse the, through the whole videos. You can download the samples. And if you didn't find it for you, you can refund it. There is no question asked. And I know that most of you guys will not be asking for it. Like I never had that in the last at least one year and a half, right? Nobody was asking me for a refund. So I know that this training is really awesome, and I know that for sure that will change your life. But if you if for any reason you don't feel that. Just ask me for a refund. There's no problem at all. I will not ask you any question. Just click on the refund button. Like there's a, there's actually in the in the Stripe or or PayPal, there's like a refund button that you just click on it and you get refunded. No question asked. I'll just click on this. Will not even think about it. So, um, so get started right now. Mountrack.com slash join. And uh, now I will be looking at all the questions. If you have uh, any question, I will be looking at the chat right now to see if there's any questions, if there's anything um, you need to ask uh, me about. I will look through the chat. I know that I have been disconnected from all the, the things to be able to focus on the presentation. I will be looking through all the, the questions have been asked and I will scroll through all of them and answer the questions one by one. So let's look at the questions. I see. So I saw from the start. Uh, so uh, first, I got on LinkedIn some questions about the um, uh, about the sans uh, um, cheat sheet. I will share that. I will share all the slides. This there will be a replay. So don't worry about it. 
there will be everything. Uh, just looking at the, the questions and I know I didn't look at all of the YouTube chat. I'm really sorry, guys. But if I looked at the chat, I will not be able to deliver this presentation. Seriously. So let's look. So will, will you offer live sessions? Um, uh, it, the, the course is video recording. So and there's any certification. So answering some of the questions. Uh, so answering some of the questions. Uh, if there is any certificate come with the training, yes. There will be a certificate coming with the training at the end of the certificate. And I'm planning to make multiple level of certificates. So a certificate for finishing the training, a certificate for uh, for having a report by yourself, a model analysis report. I'll be looking at your analysis and uh, I will be looking at your analysis report. And if it's really good, if it's really, really good, I will, of course, I will give you um, how to um, how to improve it. I will be supervising you in the report. And once you have a modern analysis report that really is really good, then I will give you a certificate for that. And this is will be the silver certificate. Um, uh, then they, there's uh, okay. How I ca how could I write my own detection? To uh, I will reply to ASDF. ASDF will be. Uh, will you offer live sessions? So this is a topic that um, this is the topic that people asking me about um, about it a lot. So I think I will be uh, offering at least QA sessions just for the people in the training. So the thing here is that the training is really really massive. It has lots of videos. There's lots of things, but the live session can help you if you are stuck in learning. I put everything I can do to make you unstuck. We will be having QA sessions in the middle. So we'll make sure that like maybe every two weeks or every three weeks to make sure that you are coping with the, with the whole thing and we are answering your questions. So there will be a mentoring and like ask everyone, like there are, you have Mahmoud Morse, you have the people who I mentioned in the training. Um, you have, uh, uh, Mahmoud Nuruddin, wow, there is a certificate also. Yes, there is, uh, there is a certificate. And actually, Mahmoud Nuruddin is also part of the training. So, uh, ask, like, ask these people. I do, uh, do reply to all of this, all of their questions. I'm always available for them if they have any question. So there will be a support. There will be definitely a support. And I do my best to, to reply to everyone. Questions. Um, thank you for your time. Thanks to you. How I could write my own detection tool, like an emulator tool. What's the required for this? Most will be requirement programming beside what we have covered. And the most important, as I said earlier, emulator at that time was the most important thing. People wanted to find a way to deal with a packed uh, model. I need to come up with another idea that's suitable for now. Like people now talking about ransomware, like how you can extract the key for ransomware, how you can actually manage with their encryption, how you can keep track of that. Like this is something could be really useful. So for example, I'm saying for example, right? Or something including machine learning into cl clustering or something like this. Everyone has its own way to learn. Um, and and uh, yes, programming is very important. Understanding malware analysis is really important. And uh, you don't maybe you don't need to analyze yourself, but you have an idea how analysis looks like. Um, Hello, Injammer. Is a malware encrypted my files, and I don't know its place in my computer, and asking me for money to decrypt? So how I can know its place? Then you need to take a memory dump. Like this is the most important. Can you have a memory dump? Then after you have a memory dump, you will find it its way in memory. You will have the hard disk. Uh, dump uh, the hard disk image and from both of them you can start to first look at the memory what's happening in the memory there's code injected there is a rouge process where is it is in the memory this is one thing the second thing is that uh, what is happening on the hard disk what's happening in the hard disk image what files have been uh, have been executed or have been uh, written recently what is all the things that had happened before that and you can find even the root cause and all the files that have been changed so you need to follow with the hard disk changes as well. You will see lots of files have been encrypted. But before all of the encryption, before the first file has been encrypted, there is a file has been dropped, for example, an exe file has been dropped. So you can associate this to that. Um, so, um, 
So um, I consider this life was worth it. And thank you. Thank you very much. And guys, really, that was a long, long session. I will, I will show you maybe my camera, but this was a long session. And I really hope that you actually enjoyed it. I am scrolling up to see the the comments. I see that uh, uh, ASDF, ASDF, he's saying that, um, he's saying things about uh, Udemy and uh, like, so I, I can understand. So he's basically saying that, will that be equal to free resources? Like there are so many YouTube videos, right? There's so many different resources. I have mentioned lots of resources. I have mentioned lots of books. And uh, the thing is that, um, for, for like, the thing is that this is, this is really like, I have put all my knowledge and my experience into that training, right? If you find anything that's even equal, like you're saying, there's Udemy, Udemy courses like $40 or there's like something that could be like $10 and I can get that and it'll be equal to this training. If there is something that's even close, like even 50% of 70% of that training, if, the, if you find something like this, I will give you my training for free and I will pay you the 997. Like, believe me, I know that even sales trainings, even I, I have friends who are taking sales trainings and they called me actually two days ago to provide an on-site training for them. So, uh, the, like, it is good. I didn't say it is bad. It is really good, but it doesn't take you to the whole, to like for whole malware analysis, uh, like the, from A to Z. So, guys, like, like seriously, if you find something that is better than this one, like I will give you that with, with $100 even, I will give you this course for free and I'll give you the 997. Is that a good deal? Like you have my email. It's it's amr.tabit at maltrack.com. You will find me, right? If you find something. So it is expensive. Uh, so, uh, yes. Yes. I think the material, by the way, uh, I see comments that people are talking about the slides and, uh, and the replay, the slides and the replay will be there. Um, I will be sending it to you. I will be sending also the resources with the links. So the name of the books, the name of the, um, like everything that's for free, I will also give it to you. I have learned for free, right? It took me a long time, but I made it, right? So, um, I made it after all. So you can do it. It will take you a long, long time, but you can make it. And I will give you all the resources to make it easier for you. But if you really want to have like a real program uh, that takes you from like A to Z and it's really, really in depth and has all the experiences that I have spent years learning them and two years to record that training and put it in a, in a way that is actually good then this training is for you. Hello, Amr, thanks for the wonderful presentation. Thanks to you. Can you review the pricing with the students? Many things once more. Um, by the way, uh, what I want to say that if you are working in a company, then like make your boss pay for that. Like it's not like, uh, I know that it's not for students, but like if you are working in a company, like, make your boss pay for that. It's, I will give you the, the, the reset, the, even the, the invoice, so you can invoice it to your manager. If they approve it, then you can join the training and you don't have to pay for anything, basically. But for students, I know it is expensive for, for some people, but believe me, like it is, it was a massive effort. And to support, to have the support for the people who are there, I can't have support for like 1,000 people or 2,000 people. I see the courses with like 10,000 people there, like, it's very difficult to support. It's very difficult to maintain a training for that. It's very difficult to actually have a, a full-time job just, just supporting and rebuilding that training. And there's so many things that I want to add. Like what I added until now, I want to add even double than that. And I can't do that if I don't have a support for that. I hope you understand what I am saying. Uh, hello, Amr. Thanks for a wonderful presentation. Can you have a review on the pricing with the students? Many things. Yes. If there's any official, I hope I replied for that. I may try to make a discount, but I think, seriously, like, I I think I have mentioned that. I hope that you understand, guys. If there's any official website that can see the latest reports about malware analysis, and I can publish the new report in there. There is a, a GitHub repository called EBT Notes. I mentioned it in the slides. You can check it out. So, there are, every company has their own uh, they have their own reports, right? 
Kaspersky, FireEye, Semantic, and they publish it in their own websites. So ABT Notes, trying to collect all of them into one repository, you can check it out. Uh, just search GitHub ABT Notes. Uh, there's an official, okay. Uh, Life help would be add a lot of value to this, would support the price. Definitely, there will be uh, there will be a support. There will be always a support from me. I will also uh, do my best to do um, like uh, bi-weekly or uh, tri-weekly um, QA sessions. But here's the thing: you need to invest in learning. Uh, you need to learn first all the the most important parts. Then the live support will be very helpful. If you are stuck, then I can help you unstuck. But if you are, if if I would just give and and reach that. It will be difficult for me. It will not be different from the videos because in the videos are really recorded in the best time and the recorded in the best way. I can make it to be to be easy to be um, uh, to be able to to go through them. It's forty hours of content, and they will have a support. So if you are stuck, like just hit me up, like send me a message, Amr. I don't understand this part. Uh, can we have um, a session together or can we? Uh, when will be the next queue session? Okay, let's have an next queue session and let's work together on that. Um, weekly, I will try to to like, I will try to make it weekly. I will do my best. Seriously, I will do my best. Uh, there is any official website I can see the latest? Yes, we apply. There is a room for installment payment, and uh, you have a good package that can help out uh, their re recession now. Um, I, I I used to have um, I may return it back to be um, to have like a payment plan. There will be a payment plan which will be I had a payment plan which is for six months, uh, one hundred ninety seven dollars uh, each month. Um, where can I find free template reports? Well, there is no, there is really nobody talks about it even. I, I only found like a small article that talks about a small blog with sounds. That's the whole thing that talked about it. There's not really much, unfortunately. And that's why I decided to make that report and add this report in the training so you can actually follow it. It's really, really easy to, to follow. The training program, uh, can we reuse it over and over again as a resource or we have access for a limited time? You have a lifetime access. Now it's lifetime access. So there's lifetime access. There's a certificate at the end if you finish it. And uh, yeah, uh, and you have all the bonuses. So I also getting somehow some messages on. Okay, no, that's something else. Okay, so what is the average salary of a malware analyst? For uh, is remote job so likely option? Remote job now, right now, to like today, it is more like yeah, I knew that companies have decided to stop a little bit the hiring because of their whole situation, but it will be resumed and remote working will be a big option, especially these days. But before there were some uh, malware bytes were hiring for uh, remote jobs recently. I got that, that from some recruiters and some of my friends. Um, so yes, and um, in this live, there's two surprise. Yes. And uh, and the certificate and a free template, yes. And uh, there's also the real scenarios, which will be added. Great, thank you, thank you, guys. Really, how did you feel about this? Like, I I, I, am, I know that I, it was very tiring, and that's why I, I told you to have snacks. I couldn't have snacks, so <laughs> please tell me, how do you guys feel? I will open my camera again, so people can see me. Now you don't need the screen for anything. So, how do you guys feel about this presentation? Seriously. Could you make the training free for teenagers and youth between 15 and 19? That's a bit difficult, to be honest. But Ahmad Mahmoud, I I, I saw some of your messages and um, um, when I slide up, I also saw that uh, Mahmoud uh, Nordin was sharing his email, but his email was being hidden uh, in the review. Anyway, I uh, Mahmoud, just message me and I will try to help you as much as I can. Recently, uh, seriously. So please message me. Uh, hi, Amr. Uh, we can start the training. Uh, when can we start the training? Once you register, you can you can start. It's a pre-record. So once you register, you can start. I have prepared everything that you can start today, and um, I will be dropping even more and more content through the time. 
And if you're starting today, then I will uh, kind of keep up with the with the bulk of students who are joining at one time, so I can keep up with the with all their questions and how their progress is going. So this is the best time. And guys, I felt great and learned a lot. Thank you, thank you very much, Amr. Thank you for sharing your experience. Thank you very much. Can it be an installment to reduce the 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 burden? I will um, include uh, like um, a six month. $197 a month. I hope that will be good. I will add this uh, package again. Uh, good presentation. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you for sharing your experience and providing resources to get cybersecurity security to the next level. Thanks to you for joining. And I know that has been a long, long one. Um, uh, Mahmoud Nuruddin, I actually noticed that in the chat there are some messages that have been blocked. Uh, and I had to review it or, or accept it. So I, I, because I wasn't looking at the chat, so I couldn't do that. Now, if you put the, the your email again, please, uh, Mahmoud Nuruddin, he, uh, put your email if you want to put your email and I will approve it. Um, thank you, Ahmad Mahmoud. Just message me um, and I will do my best. And um, Guys, I think that the, sh the, the chat is very long. So please drop your questions now if you have any question before I, I finish. Um, and I will have another um, live when I have just um, uh, just a QA session again. But please, if you have any questions about the presentation, about the resources, about the training, just put the questions right now and tell me how you feel about it. Do you use IDA Pro in this course? I use IDA Free. Um, I use either free. I use free tools as much as I can, so you don't have to pay another uh, another uh, more money for that. And either Pro is really expensive, but either free is really good. So I use either free and uh, and only debugger. How long the average duration to finish the course? The course is forty hours. So the course is forty hours. Twenty hours of them is hands on practice. Then you have the the workbook. Then you have. Um, also, I will add quizzes. This will be added to the training. And um, um, I added the first quiz. Then there will be more quizzes, which actually real exercises. So it's really good. So uh, I th I have put it as it takes six months, but needs dedication. If you are very, very slow, it's not, uh, like it will take you a bit longer. But here's the thing. Now is the best time. Like We don't know when the corona will finish. Maybe it will take six months. It will take more, it will take less. But with this situation, like I'm locked at home. I have nothing to do else so this is the time to learn right really seriously it's forensics to related to malware analysis it is quite related malware uh, memory forensics is really one thing that comes with malware analysis uh, digital forensics is another topic but we, we i'm planning to do cover the the digital forensics as well so you have the whole more incident response um was amazed you give me a great view for my next step thank you very much thanks to you and i really have i really uh, I'm really happy that you enjoyed it. Um, I'm studying cyber ops and more to get SOC Anna's job. Very good. Good for you. Uh, lifetime access I, I uh, for this surprise. Ah, yes, it's a lifetime access. You have a lifetime access. And also, if you get the training in the next three, four days, five days max, you will get also the real, the real scenarios. So with the real scenarios, we have emoted, we have wanna cry, we have not bit here. I have agreed with uh, with Amin that I told you about about it earlier. I don't know if you catch it, but he had an analysis for ransomware. He actually wrote a decryptor for it. He got a contact by one of the big companies. I don't know if I can share it, but it's like a company like Semantic in the same level. He got contacted by someone who's really uh, like a higher manager there to be to hire him in the company and to look at his decryptor. He will add a training in, like he will really teach how he analyzed this malware, how he wrote the decryptor, how he did every single part. And he will teach that in the real scenarios. He he actually, uh, he told me that he started recording. So this will be added. Also a friend of mine, he, is a, he, he was a, a malware researcher in a malware researcher in Semantic with me, one of my colleagues, he's really, really good. And he will also, he, he promised me to add a full analysis for a malware inside the training, inside the real scenarios. The real scenarios, you can get it in the next two, three, five days max, right? After that, this is will be gone. Like, 
I will close the, the, the joining for it. So if you join right now, you'll get it. If you don't, you will miss all of this and it's a really, really great resource. This will be a really good app. This course with the, with the exercise and book is so large and handsome. Thank you very much. It is really big. And uh, yes, it's almost doubled. Like from, from last year, I think it's almost doubled. Tell me about the most difficult malware case you have ever had to work with. Uh, the, the most difficult was for me was, um, a malware called Guzinem or, uh, Neymar, I think that's how they call this malware. This malware was very, very obfuscated. It was like 10,000 functions inside the, the malware. The, the way it connects to each other was very, very obfuscated. I have worked on writing a code to the obfuscated. Then I went for a trip. Then my friend who actually, uh, who, who will do a part in the training later, he took it after. It was really a nightmare for him as well. But where he managed, and I helped him later when I came back. I would like to review today's presentation again before I can join. So where I can replay today's presentation. The video will be here. Like this, this is a YouTube video, right? The video will be here. You can watch it again and again, however you want. I will keep the video there. It will also be on LinkedIn. Um, I just checked. Actually, you can recheck again. I think it's still open on LinkedIn. Yes, it's still there actually on LinkedIn. So, and I can see myself. So it is also on LinkedIn. You can, uh, you can watch it and I'll keep the replay for, uh, for a few days. So make sure that you watch it before I delete it and the replay, the, the, the session or the, the offer of the real scenarios will, will be there, uh, until the, until I delete the replay. So if you're watching the replay, if you're still watching it, it's still there. But once it's deleted, I will close for the for the real scenarios. Can anybody don't have a knowledge in Malrunners enroll for this course to have the requirements? Guys, uh, there are multiple people. Like I mentioned, some of the people who are already there, right? I will send you the slides, so you can you can just search for them on LinkedIn, on Facebook, and message them, tell them how do you feel about the training. Uh, Mahmoud Nuruddin is there. He was commenting uh, recently. Uh, Mahmoud Nuruddin, yes, he was commenting recently. He's there. Uh, Mahmoud, can you put your email? People can can ask for you. And he's called Mahmoud Nuruddin on Facebook as well because he messaged me on Facebook. So I know that he, this is his uh, Facebook uh, account, the same name. So you can reach him out. Um, I am GCFA certified. This is good for me. I don't know what is this actually. Uh, GIAC certified forensic analyst. It's really good. It's really, really good. Um, and maybe the next step for you is malware analysis. It could be your next step. And uh, digital forensics is also required by itself as a, as a job. If you like only digital forensics, then you can focus on that. If you like to get into malware analysis and have like the full image of the whole thing, this is really great as well. Uh, my friend is asking, where is the six months installment link? I didn't open it yet. So um, let's see if I can open it right now. Uh, my intern my PC is very slow at the moment because of all the apps I'm having up here. So anyway, um, yes. Now, uh, Mahmoud Nuruddin, his email is, is seen. Uh, by the way, maybe you said it before. Is there a certificate for of accomplishment? Yes, there's two certificates. There's one for finishing a training and one for analyzing a malware by your own. Write a malware analysis report. I will serve, supervise you in that so i will make sure that you actually do a really good analysis and after that after you have a report that's really good uh then i will uh, as well give you a certificate which is the the, the silver certificate for finishing uh for having a really um, successful malware analysis report so that means that you have finished the training you have able to apply it and you will have the certificate so you have two certificates the bronze and the silver I'm still hiding the gold for another reason for another time, but for now it will be the silver, uh, the the bronze and the silver, the one for uh, for finishing the training and for one for applying the training. Uh, can you make it another plan price, like divided the whole price into pieces to afford? So, let me try to do that right now. Uh, I will also look for questions. Um, 
Israel free, Israel scenarios free. It is a free bonus if you join today or in the next two, three days. Uh, it's advanced like Jerem. After that, do I need to go for Jerem? You don't need to. Seriously, like certificates are, are not important. I didn't need a certificate to work in semantic. Uh, Alexey Kilimnov, who, who wrote uh, the, the book with me, he's a senior. He worked in, in, he worked in Kaspersky, in semantic, in doctor one. He didn't finish his students. He, he didn't finish his studies. He was still a student when he worked in doctor one and Kaspersky. He didn't need uh, any degree, any certificate. He just did it. Yes, it is a bronze and gold, a bronze and silver. The final for which malware is it applied? For a malware you choose has to be a malware that is actually uh, a known malware that hits the media that people are talking about it. Not a simple malware like you know or old malware has to be like a new one. You can we can chat about it when you reach that point. And as I told you, there will be a support. I will be with you the whole training. So. Um, so we'll talk about it, we'll choose a sample, and I will look at the sample to see if it's not too easy. Sorry, there's a dog walking by. Uh, um, and then I will make sure that that you choose a good malware, that you have a, a really good malware analyst report, and we'll work on this together. What is the salary scale for a malware analyst? I would say that it depends. Um, so I would say, let's say the known prices in Ireland in semantic at that time i think was like around 50k 60k for complete junior uh, uh per year of course not per month <laughs> that would be really too good but it's around like it's yeah it's around let's say 50 60k um of euros of course um uh, 60000 euros um so Yes, um, one second, guys. I think my my PC is really, really slow. So um, just bear with me. You seriously can't imagine how many tabs I open. Like, it's massive. What is the salary? Yeah, we talked about that. So um, you can imagine 50 to 60K. Um, it's the link is not working for people who are saying that the link is not working but HTTPS so again it's HTTPS and Ooh. Yes, um, one second. So, yes, the 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 link wasn't actually working. The yes, it is slash go. Um, So it's a slash go. I also fixed the link for slash join.
Now both links work and an installment plan has been added. So yes, it's a 50K gross income. It's more than that in many cases, but it is still good price. This is for complete junior, right? Uh, by the way, maltrack.com slash join is working. Maltrack.com slash go is working. And I added the installment plan. So I added the I added the installment plan. The link's working now for sure. If you want to join, just uh, go to maltrack.com slash join or maltrack.com slash go and join the, the training. Um, so any other questions? Guys, uh, drop me if you have any other questions. Um, I don't see any new questions coming. Any other questions? We get the same offer with the installment option as well. Yes, so you get the same offer with the installment. Um, you, you still can get it, you still can refund. You still can get all the bonuses. Can you show again the slide with all the bonuses? Let me try. Um, Actually, my computer is really, really slow. So I'm really sorry, guys. Um, I think it is too slow to be able to even switch the slides. Um, x86 and 64 only do cover other operating systems for malware we don't but we cover it in the book so you can have a good start with it there is seriously 90 i think 95 percent of the malware that i saw is basically uh x86 not even 64 right so i know that for sure um will the study chfi will help to malware analysis or reverse engineering for newbie I see, I hear so many different new certificates today. Um, computer hacking forensics investigator. It will help, I think. It will help in the whole instant response and it's a, it's a, the, the step before the malware analysis. So it's really good. Uh, no course is, is such high price, kindly low it. Program is great, only problem is the price. I can understand, guys, but seriously, like this is like, if you look at Sans trainings, black hat trainings. Like this is for the for the really for the amount of the training. For people who joined it, they really feel it is like people who join the training. They say it's it's cheaper than what it should be. Like seriously, it is really really big training and it's really in depth. I have put two years of effort to make that training. Um, a commentary of your favorite books for malware analysis, uh, practical malware analysis, learning malware analysis. Mastering Malware Analysis, Reversing the Secrets of Reverse Engineering. There are four books. Uh, I recommend Learning Malware Analysis and then Mastering Malware Analysis. Then after that, go to, uh, go to, uh, what's the other name? So uh, after that, go to Reversing the Secrets of Reverse Engineering. So, yes. Uh, So, uh, 
the price includes the course, the book, the real scenarios. Yes, the, the like the, this price, let's say, includes the 11 modules. The, the malware analysis, uh, the, the malware analysis training from the ABT from, uh, from, uh, memory forensics for malware analysis from beginner to advanced. We talk about, uh, as well, uh, there's so many things. And after that, you have the workbook. You have the mastering malware analysis book. You have as well, um, you have as well, uh, the, the template and you have the real scenarios. I, I forgot what I have. Seriously, like it's really a lot of things. So, and the price includes the course, the book, yes. Um, can we discuss fileless malware in this course? We make most of the fileless malware, as I described, it's more about using PowerShell and using different things and process injection and ABI hooking. And with all of this, we have covered in the training. So you have all of this information. Um, so if there is no more questions, I will almost drop, uh, I will give exactly because here in the, here in, in the, in the live, there's a bit of delay. So I, so you actually see it like few, few minutes or one, two minutes earlier. So I'll basically drop after five minutes. If there's any question is the black, is this black hat course? Can it me upload it in Udemy? Is this development included? What is this black hat course? It's not black hat, maybe not yet, but uh, black hat courses are on site trainings mostly. Like you go there and it's on site, it's five thousand dollars for four days basically. Uh, there's great, so there's great trainings there. I have provided training similar to this to these ones, but it will not take you to the advanced level. Uh, can it? Uh, can't it me upload it in Udemy? Uh, I will not upload it to Udemy. To be honest, it's really bad. And it takes, like, seriously, it is, it's not the best place for, for a really premium training like this one. Is malware development included? No, malware development is not included because I wanted to keep it blue team. I don't want to go into red team. I don't want to go into a shady uh, area because malware development people, May like it, maybe people will say that maybe it will be illegal in some countries. Uh, maybe people will use it for a good faith, maybe, maybe people will use it for bad reasons. So, no, I try to avoid that. Can we repeat what you have covered in the train? So, let me try to repeat what is covered. So, you have the 11 modules, the, the you have the like the the ABT attacks and malware analysis overview. You have the instant response process. You have the malware analysis process, uh, the static dynamic analysis, the encryption, encoding, manual unpacking, process injection, memory forensics, exploits, shell coding, kernel mode, and you have threat intelligence and the machine learning, intro to machine learning. This is like the 11 modules. There will be more to be added. You have the malware analysis lab. Uh, the, v, the virtual machine, you have the malware analysis workbook, which is really, really impressive. This workbook is 100 pages. It is, it's really like all of them are just exercises, all of them just hands on with a description of how the solution looks like. It's really, really impressive. Like this is, this is like itself a training. You wouldn't find it in Udemy as well. You wouldn't find it even $100. Like if you find the Udemy course that's better than this workbook for even $100, you, I, I would pay you. I will pay you the $100 and I will give you the workbook for free. You will have the Mastering Manual Analysis book. You have, uh, this is, will be delivered to your home. So you will have the physical copy and you will have the, also the, the digital copy. You have the Manual Analysis report template. This is not anywhere else. You will have it in the, in the membership area. There will be a different membership area for people who are already in the training, like uh, Mahmoud. Uh, this is a completely uh, new membership area that will be added to it. And uh, there will also the malware analysis real scenarios will be also added to the training. Everybody will be added who already purchased and who is purchasing right now. Maltrack.com slash join or slash go both works now with the installment plan. The zero to hero training that will help you to be on top of the cybersecurity ladder. Uh, like, you no, know, please, if you don't, if you have. Uh, like no requirements, please, if you have mentioned it. So the blue requirements, basic cybersecurity understanding. Security blasts can be the, 
the pre-requirements for you. Basic understanding of networking, the OSI, I think that's how it's called, OSI model and how the packets looks like. You don't need to go into the routing protocols, but you need to understand the application line protocols like HTTP, DNS. We will be covering that in the training as well. We'll be covering programming as well from zero. Like if you never saw a line of code, we'll cover that. So don't worry about this. Um, what is, uh, okay. So we covered the prerequisites. Uh, good knowledge in networking and, uh, and, sec and security, but not in depth, not in depth. Like, networking but not network security because ccna and ccnb and how to deal with routers how to how to deal with the firewalls this is not the topic that we cover it's not important for the malware analysis so no just the understanding of the basic cyber security i think with, if you understand this presentation you are good to go uh, with the malware with the networking you need to understand the packets and how everything works better that you understand wireshark but we'll also cover it um so if, if job placement or internship is provided with the price would have justified, well, I hope so. If I have a company, I would hire all of you guys, but I don't know. Uh, can we discuss the file malware in this course? I do cover, uh, I do cover uh, different uh, techniques that the file malware are using. In this training, we cover different techniques for them. We cover the, the, the PowerShell, the, we cover as well, we cover the, um, the process injection, we cover the API hooking, we cover different techniques that, that are used in the in the file malware. So it is included in the training. Um, so um, what other questions? The best read team course, you know, which is online course. To be honest, I don't know. Uh, I think offensive security, even though here's the thing, right? Red teaming and uh, red like red team attacks are mostly now using like most of the red team things like what you learn offensive security is not how you get into an organization how you hack an organization for example it is mostly the lateral movements if you remember all of this the big slide that when we had everything it is basically the when we had like all the stages of the attack from initial access to the to the execution to the uh, to the lateral movements when they hack one machine, they already hacked it, and then they go to the next uh, machines. This is the red team. This is most of the red team courses. There is there is a big dilemma about malware development and and uh, like social engineering and spear phishing and this type of attacks. I don't know a good training to be honest, so I can't recommend. A, the Malware Analysis Mindset course has been renamed to Malware Incident Response. It has been renamed because have been added lots of things for uh, different things about incident response. And there will be things will be added as well. And the training has completely uh, added to a new membership area. We have more, lots of new things has been added. So yes, since your main concern is covering TTBs, it is the main concern of everyone. This is the whole thing, right? What is the thing? that the companies won't. That's why I cut, like, this is what I focus on. What is the companies are talking about now? All people talking about TTBs. What, what threat hunting is talking about now? TTBs, right? The um, tactics, techniques, and procedures. So that's why I focus on this, right? And the whole thing is you need to follow with the, with the updates in the whole uh, science, you know? You need to know what is the trendy now, what, what people are talking about, what's their language. If you are having an interview, if you tell them it's a, it's the, if you talk about TTBs, they will like you very much. Then you talk about things that are, that are outdated, like, okay, I know how to unpack a malware. Okay. Do you know about something about the initial access, the execution, the lateral movements? If you don't know the answer, that will not be good for you in the interview. Why is the course title of the part payment different from the full? Yeah. Sorry about the, sorry about the renaming part, but believe, like, Seriously, it is the same training now. The renaming, I need to rename it. I didn't fix the sales page, so sorry about that. How difficult to get a job in EV company as a malware analyst? Um, to be honest, I see lots of people getting successes when they do provide a report. People who apply for different jobs through Indeed and uh, through um, LinkedIn jobs, they, get, they go to the HR, the HR has 1,000 emails. Some of them, they don't even open them. But if you go to, di to directly messaging the managers or actually show your work and people messaging you, it is way easier. I have, 
I have many of my friends who get approached by companies from F Secure to Avast to uh, to FireEye to uh, um, to Avera as well. So it is possible if you have something that proves you your skill. At the present, how many students are there in the course? Uh, at present, I think around fifty, maybe. Will it be live or self? Paced. How many hours uh, a day if life? Uh, it will be self-paced, so it will be pre-recorded. And the reason for that, everybody has its own timing. There are people from India, there's people from US, there's people from Europe. I'm from Europe, so it's very hard to support all the time zones. Um, as well, you can do it in your own time. Uh, basically, I recommend at least uh, four hours a week beside the work, uh, or three hours a week, that's like a module, and then do the work and do follow with the workbook, with the book, with uh, with all the exercises and do them yourself. So eight hours per two weeks is good. Uh, will it? Okay. Um, there is a lot of things has been changed in the training in the course. Yes, there is lots of things will be added. They will be adding quizzes as well. You didn't see that, uh, Mahmoud, because I didn't add you to the new uh, the new page. Uh, the new uh, membership area. It is much better, and there's uh, I will be adding quizzes. Uh, for every module so to, to test your your level and as well you have the whole exercises in the workbook and everything uh, Dereku, um, Dereku is saying can I have the list of your students who have finished the course for my hiring um, well email me first um, I don't give all the names but I can tell you the people who are uh, maybe interested for hiring, I need to message them to get to know if they are interested in what you're offering first, and uh, then we'll see. So please email me, amrad.thabit at maltrack.com. Um, any other questions? So I think we are three hours, 40 minutes. I will give it two, three minutes more to see if there's any questions. Please, uh, can I have a... Uh, Except IDA and Oli Debugger, what else tools are covered in this course? We cover BStudio, Volatility, CFF Explorer, B BID, we cover um, X64 Debugger, we cover, um, we cover tools like, uh, uh, what's the, Embrec, uh, we cover um, Skyla, we cover um, Dumbbits, we cover, uh, we cover Cuckoo's Handbox as an idea. We do cover so many other tools, so I really, uh, I really can't remember all of them. Well, I need to to read the whole training to remember all of them. Will there be any discount for uh, students uh, or more people join the the course? For more people, yes. Just email me if you have some people who wants to join as well, and uh, there's a there's a bulk. There will be a discount. Uh, so email me uh, today. At Amr Thabit, you can reply to any of these emails, right? You can message me on LinkedIn, on Facebook, on uh, on my email, um, amr.thabit at maltrack.com. Uh, since we all have access for life, if you add any uh, uh, any new real science, we have access to them. Yes. So Sergio, if we add, um, if there is any additional stuff, you will be getting them in the real scenarios. But if you didn't register in the next one, two, three days, you will not have access to them. So. Uh, make sure that you, you join because I will be adding. Uh, now we have three malware. I want to add a Stuxnet. Uh, I want to add as well. Uh, there will be a password locker. There will be another malware that will be added. Uh, I will be open also for suggestions. People can suggest me a malware and then I analyze it. Or one of my uh, of one of my friends, my colleagues who are actually worked in semantic, they can analyze it as well. Is Blanc and Wireshark as well? Yes, it's Blanc and Wireshark are also added to the training. There are tools also covered for the training. Uh, what else? Uh, I don't remember all of them. It's really a lot. So we cover so many different things. And I will be adding all the forensic tools, all the digital forensic tools. So this would be good. But what is the real scenario stuff? The real scenario is basically you have the analysis of known uh, malware that really hit the media bar storm, like really, really known malware, like Emotet, WannaCry, uh, not pity. There are two of them around somewhere, and one's banking Trojan. Emotet still being spread right now through the corona. He's breeding through the corona maps. We will have the the analysis report for them, 
will have the IDB file, so the analysis on the IDA, you'll have the code for them, and then you have recorded videos for how he, uh, how uh, Mahmoud Morsi did the analysis for them, uh, how they have been doing it, and uh, it is actually one of th one of the students who actually analyzed them after the training, and he uh, he shared his uh, analysis. There are Virus Bulletin, if you know Virus Bulletin, it's really one of the big conferences and big magazines. They shared his report on Emotet. They really shared his report. And um, and you will see his report, you will see his analysis, you will see videos he recorded for that. Also, you can ask him uh, directly about his analysis and he will be answering any questions. Uh, Radio Head, um, so thank you very much. Thanks to you for joining. Thank you, thank you. Um, Write a blog with all the free resources so people who can afford this course can still get to become. I will share the the I will share this. I shared it in a in a video. All the resources I will I shared it uh, again in an Arabic uh, life, and I will share also the slides of this one so you have all the resources written in it. If you want to join, I will share actually the resources. Uh, I will share the slides just after the live, so I will attach it in an email. And share it or put it in a drive. I think I'll put it in Google Drives or something like that. Uh, okay. Any question? Seriously, any question remaining? Um, any question about the whole presentation, about instant response, about uh, about the training, about the books? Uh, did you cover Ghidra? I didn't cover Ghidra, but I will be covering, uh, I had a video about it, so I will be covering that. I will add it into the real scenarios uh, to cover Ghidra. I think Ghidra is, thanks to you, uh, Muhammad, uh, Ghidra is a good tool, but it is not taking over uh, Ida Bro at any time. Ida Bro 3 is still really strong candidate to uh, Ghidra. The only benefit of Ghidra is the, um, What's called the the decompiling, but apart from that, it's not as comparable to IDA yet, and people are still using IDA. So I covered how it's how it looks like, how it is different from IDA Bro. I covered different things, so uh, I will be sharing that as well in the real scenarios. Uh, great session, thanks a lot. Thanks to you guys. Thank you. I think I will be closing soon. I will take the last. Two questions, the last two questions. Seriously, the last two questions. So I'll be waiting for this last two questions. Thank you, thanks a lot. Thank you guys, thank you for joining. And I really hope that it was worth your time because um, I have been scrolling at the beginning of the session and I see there's uh, someone called uh, Mira. He was, uh, he was not happy. There was also some other people who weren't happy. And I really apologize for long intro, seriously. I know that I take too long in describing everything. And uh, I'm sorry about that. I do apologize. So, thanks to you. I really hope to see you in the training. Please write in the comment if you join, just write because to add you to the real scenarios. Uh, thank you, Mahmoud Nuruddin. Thank you very much for joining. I really appreciate that. Um, last two questions. Last two questions. Last two questions. This is the last moment because I see 87 people still watching the webinar. So last two questions. Touched volatility. This is the first question. Yes, I do cover volatility in details on how to use it and how to do uh, how to um, how to analyze a memory dump using volatility and the whole memory forensic so i do cover it in the training um are you working full-time job now i do i work in tenable i hope to be able to uh, only working on that training so i can really support the people there and have like this weekly support like have all of that so this is my goal uh, at some point don't tell my manager well let's see how it goes uh, this is I don't count that ring that question so one question I didn't get all the this but would you love to review later uh, thank you Linda for joining and uh, the video will be the replay will be included so you can go back to it even in YouTube right now I think you can go back and start the video from the beginning right now even if it's still live how can I get a job well with the Corona situation now it's a bit difficult but the, the, here's the thing. Finish the training, analyze a malware, uh, write your malware analysis report. You will get the report template. Analyze it, 
send it to me. I will supervise you in writing this report. This will be really presenting your uh, your skills, and then you can be um, you can be even approached by by managers or or different um, different people who are hiring for malware analysis for malware incident response. Or you can actually directly send to the managers, tell them about your work, tell them about how uh, show them your report. That's enough. Like. 70% of jobs are actually being hired through uh, by, directly by, by messaging without Indeed, without the job offers. The managers directly ask the people or people directly uh, directly connecting with the managers. So once you have something proves your skill, you have a really professional way of, of, uh, of uh, approaching the, these managers and these people. You have a really big chance than anyone else. Uh, Mahmoud. If you finish the course, I would love your resume. He's still joining, so uh, Mahmoud, send Amr your Malranas report. He may consider. Okay. Uh, last question. Last one question. So I'm waiting for the last question. I know there's a delay, so I maybe answer one question and then I close. Last question before I finish. I am really interested to see how people are actually chatting to each other, and it's like a, it's like a hangout place. Like we should call that a party. Like we should do a, like a QA party. Like when there's people mastering each other, people are talking together, and we have like a Zoom meeting. Um, so, okay, I think I will close on this. If there is no. I will give it exactly one minute before I close. Guys, go to it, uh, HTTPS double dots slash slash www.maltrack.com slash join. Join the training now and you will get access to the real scenarios. I will add you to the real scenarios. And uh, Stuxnet is, uh, is, there is parts of Stuxnet I have analyzed in the training itself. And there will be also added uh, additional parts in the real scenarios. So yes. Uh, I have uh, have added some parts of it in the training itself. Does this make sense for a partially retired person? Partially retired? Well, if you're interested, then why not? It depends on what's your goal. What's Message me and let's talk about it. Is there a Facebook group or WhatsApp group? There is a Facebook group for people who are joining this training where we all uh, hang out together. Any question, before I even answer, there's lots of people from the students who answer your question and there will be QAs there. Uh, start a Discord server. It's the best. Maybe. Um, okay. Um, okay, I will finish here. Thank you guys for joining. I hope you really enjoyed this presentation. And uh, message me uh, today. Uh, ask me whatever your thoughts. Tell me what do you think about the whole presentation. Was it good? Was it bad? What was the what was the good part? What was the bad part? Tell me about how do you feel about the training. If you uh, to join, maltrack.com slash join, maltrack.com slash go. All will go there. So uh, join now to get access to the real scenarios. And see you later. The reply, the replay of this uh, video is here. This is the replay that you see. Uh, actually, it's the YouTube video, so you can go back, watch the, the whole session. Uh, see you later, and bye-bye.